Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It is 2018. And this is Paula G, the Paula G Show right here on Survival Radio Network, where we expand your mindset through worldwide conversations. It is so good to be with you all again. I feel like I've been gone forever. I hope you all have had a wonderful, incredible break, and you are ready for a new year. I am so excited about this show this evening because, and I'm going to jump right into it, (laughs) because my two guests are the two men that have made it possible for me to be on radio Clark Garrison and Jerry Royce, and we're going to be talking with both of those gentlemen this evening. But before I get started, as always, thank you so much to all of you, my listeners, my live listeners, podcast listeners, those here in the state of Georgia, right here in the ATL, around the U.S. of A., my military families, both here and abroad, truck drivers who are out there on the highways and byways listening, those of you who are listening worldwide, the U.K., Australia, New Zealand, all over. Thank you all so very much for listening. You all know I always say what? Time is precious. It is the one thing that you cannot get back. So for you to think and not robbery, to spend just a little bit of time with me is truly, truly appreciated. I thank you all so very, very much. And before I go any further, I want to give a couple of shouts out this evening, first of all, to my regular engineer, Mr. Mike Barnes. He's out this evening. He's had some uh, death in his family, immediate friends. So our prayers, our thoughts and prayers go out to uh, them as he uh, is with his friends at this time. But also on a lighter note, I want to give my oldest daughter, and I said that kind of hard, oldest, D-Lane, a very happy birthday. Tomorrow is her birthday, so I want to say happy birthday to her and my grandson on Saturday. I think it's Saturday. He'll be one year old, so birthday blessings to you both. Now, I want to take a moment and um, talk to a gentleman who, gosh, what's it been Four years, I think four years ago, five years ago, we had a conversation, and then we had another conversation, and then we had another conversation, and here I am on Survival Radio Network, and the man who has made that happen is none other than the CEO, Mr. Clark Garrison of Survival Radio Network, and we want to chat with him a little bit about you know our journey together and how this all got started, and What's in store for 2018 for Survivor Radio Network? So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Paula G Show, Mr. KG himself, Clark Garrison. Paula to the G. What's going on? How you doing? (laughs) I am wonderful, Clark to the G. What happened to applause? You don't get to applause? (laughs) No, you know, know, I don't get that kind of stuff. I haven't really worked hard enough for it. It's only the third day of the month. I know, right? And you multitasking tonight. First of all, thank you so much for sitting in and <laughs> engineering for me tonight. You do. I'm just going to tell it. You are multitasking tonight, and <laughs> I okay. certainly always, always appreciate it. But thank you so very much. Our journey has been what four years, five years? I think I've lost track. Uh, since uh, uh, yeah, not, four years, four years, four. Four, yeah. four years and five it years. It seems like more because I, I seem like we, we've been friends for quite some time, but I guess four years is a long time. It is. It is. Yeah. It is. Especially in dog so, years. <laughs> so share, a little, share your thoughts and, and share a little bit about the history of Survival Radio Network, how you and I got kind of got hooked up. So the history of it is I've been in radio's Back in, I say back in, like it's back in the day, but 2009, I started uh, in radio mm-hmm. and um, didn't know anything about it. Just kind of, you know, felt like I had something to say, like many people do. And I got my chops and my experience under my belt. And along the way, I, I kept meeting some really cool people as guests or we would just network in the same kind of uh, uh, field. And I was looking for a platform at that time, specifically online, that had a collective of individuals who were about positive messaging. So I found a bunch of shows. Uh, I found, uh, you know, a variety of things, but not one particular platform that that emphasized only that. 
And so, being the Sagittarian that I am, <laughs> I just said, I will create it myself, and we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. So I tricked a bunch of people in the beginning and thinking that I knew what I was doing, and uh, as our well. was formed. <laughs> now, uh, yes, go, go ahead. ahead. And what, why the name Survival Radio Network? Um, I had written a book, which is why I started the show in the first place, called How to Survive the Next 365. And it was really just a memoir of my uh, financial devastation in 2007 and eight. And Mm -hmm. I needed a therapy uh, session, and I couldn't afford one, so I wrote a book, and that became my therapy. Right. And, yeah, and so the book was How to Survive the Next 365. So I was really keen on the whole survival thing, because if you guys can remember as far back as 2008 and man, we thought uh, the world was coming to an end. Yeah. Um, at least the financial world. I mean, people. Mm-hmm. there were companies that were just dying that you grew up with, right? That you were right. like, there's no way that company disappeared. And Wall Street had crashed, and it was like 1929 again. And so mm-hmm. I really felt like we we all needed to get a survival kit under our belt, whether it was financially, whether it was just, you know, in, in socially, economically, um, health. Uh, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. God, we need to get our basics. That's what right. that stood for to me. So I wanted I, I was I wanted to have a platform that stood for that. You know, there's you can always mm-hmm. build on stuff, but if you build on a faulty uh platform or base, then you then eventually the higher you get you're gonna crumble. So I felt like that was a cool name that could just kinda harken back to survival techniques and ideology. Mm-hmm. So that started in 2012. Shortly after, I bumped into you at a Hank Stewart um, event, White Lennon. At, yeah. the White Linen event that we were covering that year. And I think you had worked with the Kitties because Paula loved the Kitties <laughs> um, earlier that day. And you were wandering, and you got a little bit too nosy. To, <laughs> and True. You came on over and was like, "Okay, hey, what you doing?" We had a live remote set out there, and I think I was on break from it at that point so the mm-hmm. mics were on the table and we were just kind of hanging out and I was watching the table and I started talking to you about who we are what we do and you had, you had mentioned that you at some point had considered radio but didn't know how to get started and mm-hmm. and I said hey give me a call and we'll, we'll, we'll play around with some ideas and uh, after after we talked and uh, you, I knew immediately you were t- the type of woman that needed to to really be sure, and I think I even told you back then, you know, go and pray, think, meditate, all yeah. those things about it, because if you do this, this needs to be something that you do for the long term. And here you are, exactly. 72 years later, you're <laughs> rocking, you know, <laughs> rocking this thing. So there yes, you yes, yeah, and, and you're absolutely right, and I, you know... I, you know, I try to think of ways to just express just how grateful and appreciative I am because, you know, prior to that conversation, you didn't know me from Adam's house cat. So, you know, you, to take a <laughs> chance. I'd never heard that one, by the way. <laughs> That's a new one. That's good. That's good. So, you know, based on our conversations, to take that, that chance, you know, because this is your brand. This is your network, Survival Radio Network and Survival Radio Christian Network. That's your, that's your brand. So to take that chance on me and have that faith in me, I truly, truly appreciate it. And all of the, you know, the other thing I appreciate about the Survival Radio Network and Survival Radio Christian Network is the training that you offer. Um, the training that you offer and um, the opportunities to grow, for us to grow, you know, um, as radio hosts. Yeah, so, and that, and that really goes back to um, when I first started out, I didn't have anybody really to go to other than, and, and, and I just want to make sure, can you still hear me? You yes, hear me? uh-huh. Yeah. So I didn't really have a lot of outlets in terms of how do you do online radio, what, what's the best practices, radio jargon, knowing the industry, really treating it like a professional would. And, mm-hmm. and so what I thought would be really cool is uh, I can take the years that I've been involved in the studies that I've had in classes and mentorship 
and roll that into an, a, a, a sort of uh, benefit to come aboard mm-hmm. the Survival Radio Network. Uh, and, and, and so everyone who does has uh, me, and now uh, we have one of the cool things about being around long enough uh, or a, for a while is that we have seasoned veterans like yourself and uh, Maisha Claiborne and uh, Gay Pope Payton, something, something, something she got married. So I think it's white. Uh, we, we've got, <laughs> right. uh, uh, you know, Sharon and Hope, the mm-hmm. whole cast of uh, Survival Radio Christian Network, uh, the original ones mm-hmm. who came aboard. We've got some talent got, now. Uh, Joyce White over there. Who, Christine yeah, mm-hmm. Joyce White. We, we've got people who've been there and done it. Right. and have measured and gone on who, who are now syndicated on other platforms as well. So we right. we now have a pool of people that a newbie can come on and say, how do you do this? What's the best way to do this? How can I avoid some pitfalls? And and, and that, to me, is worth its weight right. to go. Right. Well, Clark, I appreciate you so very much. And, of course, you know, I'm going to have you back on later in the year, and we're going to talk a little bit more. But thank you so much for taking a moment to chat with me and once again I truly truly appreciate you from the bottom of my heart and Survival Radio Network. Thank you love. Well listen I just want to say that we benefit just as much uh, from having someone like you be a part of our organization uh, because it really is about the people on the organization and not me. Yeah. So thank you so much Aww. for putting in for a good heart. Yeah, <laughs> let's keep it rolling man. Let's do something let's keep great. Keep it rolling. <laughs> Clark Garrison of Survival Radio Network. We are going to take a break, ladies and gentlemen. And when we come back on the flip side, we will be talking with the other gentleman who has made radio possible for yours truly. And that is Jerry Royce Live, Positive Power 21. This is the Paula G Show. This is Paula G on Survival Radio Network. And we will be back in a few moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Looking for a cafe with a home-like appeal where all who enter feel like they are part of something? Visit My Coffee Shop, located in East Lake, Atlanta, Georgia. MCS has a full breakfast and lunch menu, offering both hot and cold options, and is home of the amazing basil lemonade. But don't forget their assortment of freshly brewed coffees. Come on by at 2462 Memorial Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, 30317. We're pretty sure my coffee shop at East Lake will become your coffee shop, too. iDope, iDope, globally inspired vision stylewear. A fusion of classic heritage and contemporary sophistication. An essential part of your lifestyle and fashion expression. iDope, iDope, vision stylewear for the fashion forward. And socially conscious. Let's make this a dope world together. I dope, I dope. Available online at idope.com. That's e y e d o p e. I dope.com. Survival Radio Network with now more than one million downloads. Congratulations to the staff, producers, engineers, and hosts for your tireless pursuit of excellence. And thank you, our loyal listeners, for supporting this movement to inspire, motivate, and educate people worldwide. Survival Radio Network, Survival Radio Christian Network, and our new Survival Sports Radio Network broadcast top-notch shows Sunday through Saturday. Check us out by visiting our website at www.survivalradionetwork.us. SRN, we do radio one million strong. The S-R-N Hello family This is Arthur Roland Gospel recording artist from Atlanta, Georgia And you listen to my good friend Paula G and the Paula G Show On the Bible Radio Network And if you're not listening to Paula G Your radio is not on What is it? I just can't hide Paula's on the radio I feel it so good and we are back. This is the Paula G Show right here on Survival Radio Network. And many thanks to Mr. Arthur Rowland for that wonderful, 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 wonderful message. And also Heston's Dear God and his music can be found on iTunes and Amazon. And at the top of the show, the theme, the new theme for the Paula G Show, Slow Earth by V. Ferg, and his music also can be found on iTunes, Amazon, and SoundCloud. Now, we just had a conversation with Clark Garrison, the CEO of Survival Radio Network, of which I've been a part of for the last four years, but there's also a gentleman who has been very instrumental in Paula G being on the radio, and you know, as you journey through life and you embrace those things that you are called to do, there's special people along the way who think it not robbery to step out on faith and open a door or two just for you. And when I decided to do radio, as we've just heard, Clark Garrison opened the door and gave me an opportunity. Then there was another gentleman who did the same thing. He placed, he was placed in my path a little over a year ago. He's also opened doors for me to expand my radio experience and skills. He is the CEO of his own network, Positive Power 21 Christian Media. He is Mr. Positive Power 21 himself, Jerry Wislide, a.k.a. the Batman of Late Night Radio. And I co-host The Quiet Storm, the Late Night Special, and it airs Friday evening, 11.30 p.m. to 1 a.m. on Positive Power 21. And tonight I'm really honored to have him broadcasting on the Paula G Show over both networks, the Survival Radio Network as well as Positive Power 21. And I encourage you, each and every one of you that are listening, to support both networks. Each offers quality Internet programming as well. Please welcome Paula G Show, the man who I marry every Friday evening at 11.30 p.m., and it gets annulled by <laughs> 2 a.m., Mr. Jerry Voice Live. Hey, hey, can you feel the power? Can you feel it? <laughs> Yes, What's up, Paula? Jerry, Jerry, how are you, love? I am awesome. How you feeling? 
I am wonderful, and I am just, I'm just full tonight. I'm just overwhelmed because this actually is the second anniversary of the Paula G show. So, you know, I've got a whole lot of emotions going on, you know, in and through me. And just to be able to celebrate both you and Clark um, this evening is just, is just a blessing. So before we go any further, tell us how the name Batman came around. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> how how we get Batman? <laughs> that's a good that's a good question. Um the true yeah. origin I found the this truth. Ring. Well, what happened yeah. was I made friends with um Tina of course, she was Superwoman. And I think the nickname was created from Not that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from her and 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 um Linton Smith cuz we call him Superman. So we called ourselves mm-hmm. the super, you know, super friends. So, and then I found this ring, you know, while I was out shopping and it was on after that, you know, I was up late people saying, when do you go to bed? And, you know, of course at the That's time, true. they didn't know I was going through some stuff at that time with my medication. So yeah, I was, my clock was off, mm-hmm. but you know how it is when you, when you have creative juices, sometimes you just can't just shut it off, you know? Yeah. So you got to keep it flowing, yeah. keep it flowing. So tell us a little, give us a little bit, because, you know, people ask me, you know, often, who is Jerry Royce? Who is Jerry Royce? So tonight we, we want the audience to know who Jerry Royce is. And we'll talk a little bit later on about what's going on in Positive Path 21. And we want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, very serious health issue, uh, diabetes. But for right now, we just want to know who is Jerry Royce? Take, take take us into Jerry Royce yeah, it's funny. <laughs> and give us a little background of how you wound up um, on internet radio as well. That's right. And, and it's funny, you know, I ask people the question every time they come on my show, who is, who are you? And sometimes people are like, <laughs> kind of like, oh my God, you know, and, it's, and there's things run yeah. through your head because you're so many things, you know, your father, your brother, yeah. your, your yes. kid, your, you know, your big kid, your mm-hmm. pet owner, you name all these things, but they want to mm-hmm. know who you <laughs> I don't really are. And the yeah. thing is, I'm, I'm, I was listening to my friend today and um, cause I'm working on a movie and you know, I'm a server. Mm-hmm. I'm a, I'll just say I'm a server for the good Lord using my gifts and talents to serve mankind to help spread mm-hmm. his word, to reclaim his kingdom for those that are lost and wandering around in darkness. Eventually one day they will run across some of these platforms that he has put in place. So I just mm-hmm. big caps server, mm-hmm. <laughs> a server. Mm-hmm. and you've got your your family has a, a background of, of owning businesses and your background is in media, isn't it? Yeah, uh, my grandfather, um, well, my great grandfather actually was a farmer. He actually owned like I think it was like five hundred acres of land, and he started as he got older. I think he split it all up to his family members, cousins, and stuff, and everybody put a trail or built a home on it. And then my grandfather ended up uh, building up on the house and, and expanded the farm. And he also had lawn care business. He had um, he did he did uh, had janitorial services for what they call nurseries, for daycare centers, and um, snow removal. And he did he had, he he leased land to other farmers and farm did some farming harvesting and stuff like that and he wow. raised uh, farm animals right. he, he would you know he had cows and horses and he would sell them and raise them and you know so he was a uh, you know a bit of a farm hustler uh from maryland living in maryland mm-hmm. and then my dad and i and my brother we started a publishing company my mom actually financed it and because she had all the money and um <laughs> and so we uh, started our own news magazine so basically, she wanted to invest in that. You know, my dad invested a lot of his contacts and network, and he was already in. He was in printing and publishing. Also, we, we all three of us worked for a math, science, and um, a research journal publisher. That's all we did was worked on books for like you know Rockefeller grants, all those big grants, big universities, mm-hmm. big time books on cancer research, stuff like that. And so that's why I got a lot of my experience, and, I, and also my my media background came from community college. Uh, where they had their own cable network, and I was able to get like real studio production, learn how to edit by hand, and use all the equipment, mm-hmm. and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And but I was more so in the graphics because I actually, when I was twelve, I actually owned my own publishing company, which was a comic book. Me and a couple of friends and I, we had our own companies, and we would share our stories. So I learned how to do story development and character development at a real young age. So that's that was the beginning of my mm-hmm. entrepreneurship. Was right there. 
Wow, wow. Now, Positive Power 21 started out as a secular station, did it not? And then you actually decided to... I don't know if you heard this story. It actually started. No. It actually started as a newsletter. Yep, it was a. Oh newsletter. wow! I was in the man. I was in management. I was. A, I was a mm-hmm. detail in management. It was a combination of customer service and clerks, and they had just merged mm-hmm. the two departments, so they were kind of a little unfamiliar with each other. And then some people had history, you know, like from the streets and stuff, and so it was a lot of animosity. Mm-hmm. And it was a lot of. You know, they didn't want to do this, didn't think it was a good idea type thing. So when I walked in, when I walked into that situation, I'm like, wow. You know, I never managed people who wasn't mm-hmm. happy before, you know, because when right. I was working for the health department, I was a, um, I, I was like a, what they call a, um, a temporary supervisor until he was able to find somebody. Um, everybody that was mm-hmm. working for me was like happy to love their job, you know. So these people right. were very unhappy. They, they didn't make a lot of money. And they were stuck. A lot of them were close to retirement, and they had mm-hmm. new people coming in the door. They had like master's degrees and doctorates, and working on their doctorates, but they weren't. They was in customer service, you know. They were some of your lower grade mm-hmm. position, but they was trying to find something just to get into government, and I guess work their way up. That was their whole mindset, and that's what everybody mindset. Just find a stepping stone. So um, I used the newsletter with a combination of affirmations, and um, you know, like you know from brainy quotes and all of them and and then i would find like really colorful pictures that, that was funny mm-hmm. and they liked that it was just something i sent through the email and then i wow. had a graphic background so i'm gonna make it look nice and professional like a departmental thing and then the other managers got jealous right. about it and they was actually trying to get me to shut it down so i ended up shutting it down but what i did i made it just like an affirmation type thing and i called it positive power positive power Wow, that's how I guess, and that's how the that's how the name came about. Yep, that's how I guess started. That's that's how how the name. Name. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I, you know, and as with I was talking with Clark a little earlier, and he was sharing how um, why he named the you know network Survivor Program Network, and you explained why you named it Positive Power Twenty One, and I think that's real. You know, words have power, names have power, and, and you know, purpose in that power, and um. You know, when we're doing these things that we love and when we're on these journeys to our passion, it's really important how, how we brand it and how we label it and what we call it and so forth. So um, that's, you know, that's huge. Now, I know that uh, we're going or do you need to take a break? I know you, gotta, you, you uh, come on air at 9 o'clock. Are we good? Yeah, yeah. So when do you shut down? You shut down at nine thirty. Okay. We're already on the air. So I shut down nine thirty. Yeah, I don't have to do anything. Yeah, already, okay. We already okay. Then. Okay, so we're we good. So we can keep it rolling. Okay. Uh, what I do want to do is take a commercial break, and then when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the projects that you have coming up in twenty eighteen, and also we're gonna talk a little bit about. Um, that nasty girl called the Diana. We are talking right now this evening with George Positive Power 21 here on Survival Radio Network on the Paula G Show. We're going to take a break and we'll be back in a moment. Hang tight. You are listening to Jerry Boy's podcast.
Do you have a business, product, service, or an event coming up? Is your current marketing getting you nowhere? Survival Radio Network is an award-winning network with over 1 million downloads. We're offering high-exposure 30-second spots on our network, reaching diverse demographics both locally and nationwide. Give us a call at 323-977-8172 or visit our website at www.survivalradionetwork.us today. SRN, we do radio. Do you have tax issues, owe back taxes, or need tax relief? Contact L&B Tax Service today. L&B offers you over 15 years of expertise and first-class tax service for individuals, professionals, and business owners. With nationwide service, you can easily find a location near you. Contact one of our tax professionals through our website, lbtaxservice.com. That's www.lbtaxservice.com. L&B Tax Service incorporated tax professionals that you can trust do you know that having a dirty filter in your heating and air system can cause major damage to your unit and pollute the air in your home having proper maintenance to your heating and air system is just like getting a tune up on your car because you want today and avoid spending unnecessary money tomorrow call temperature design heating and air today 770-823-7160 that's 770-823-7160 Hi, I'm Ryan Seacrest for RAD. Over 300 people in this country are killed every week by a drunk driver. That's the equivalent of two 747 plane crashes every single week. And the problem isn't going away unless we all do our part to stop it. So if you see someone who's about to drive after drinking, get the keys. Don't leave it up to anyone else. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. A public service announcement brought to you by RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. The S-R-N. Hello, family. This is Arthur Roland, gospel recording artist from Atlanta, Georgia. And you're listening to my good friend, Paula G. and the Paula G. Show on the Viral Radio Network. And if you're not listening to Paula G., you're ready to use my own. What is it? I just can't hide. Paula's on the radio. I feel it so good and ladies and gentlemen, we are back live this evening broadcasting on Survival Radio Network as well as Positive Power 21. And I have the distinct pleasure of speaking with both gentlemen who have made it possible for Paula G. to be on the radio. And earlier we were talking with Clark Garrison. And we are now speaking with Jerry Royce of Jerry Royce Live, Positive Power 21. So, Jerry, tell us, tell us a little bit about what it, what it takes to do what you do. <laughs> in radio like like they always say <laughs> any any good entrepreneur would tell you it takes passion you gotta have a lot of passion and, mm-hmm. and i remember i met uh, uh earl graves and uh twice matter of fact he was over at morgan you know he supports mm-hmm. morgan state university because he's a graduate of this school and he pumps out millions of dollars into their program and i remember he was there for book signing and i had my magazine right I was, I was i was really influenced to do that magazine because of help it was actually a school project and um, mm-hmm. I was so impressed with Black Enterprise. It was funny how I ran across the ma- all the times I've been in the store. I never noticed it before until one day I re- it was a it was like a really bad snowstorm, and I was running uh, information technology uh, 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 department for a publishing company, and I uh, and I was driving a sports car, and it wasn't good in the snow, and I had a pretty long way to get home. Like it was a good thirty five forty minute drive. And one of my coworkers was getting mm-hmm. off like around eleven thirty that night. She said, "She looked, said, look, Jerry, you know, if you can't think you can make it, she said, I, I live like ten minutes from here in that Drew Hill Park. She said, if you can make it there, you know, or just park the car and walk, you know." And I was like, "All right, cool, you know, it's real nice." So, so I got in the car. I looked like I couldn't make it. It was pretty bad. So I called her. She said, "Okay, cool." She had a huge house. It was incredibly big. It was like a baby mansion, just her. And so mm-hmm. she uh, so she had spare mm-hmm. rooms and stuff. So she had a stack of these magazines. I was like, "What's that?" And she says, "Black Enterprise." She had like, I mean, it was a lot of them. And I said, "Oh, can I read?" So I stayed mm-hmm. up like a couple of hours reading them, and she let me take some home. I was so blown away uh, that it's just my my innovation, my creativity, my thinking cast was just mm-hmm. firing off like crazy. And uh, it's like right. God was speaking to me because I was always up two, three in the morning. That's like I was hearing everything. And next thing I know, I ended up getting, going back to school for uh, community college. 
for graphic design and one of my projects was to we had to do a cover a, a magazine cover of some sort and then that's when I came up I couldn't think of a title so I asked my brother he came up with the title of the magazine and the next thing you know I showed it to my parents and my mom and dad were so impressed and mm-hmm. my mom said we ought to do this you know because they were living in an area where African Americans were there and they had professional jobs and you know then you had some mm-hmm. hood but they didn't have their own magazine so that was the first black magazine in Talbot County, Maryland. If anybody know anything about Talbot County, Maryland, that's where Frederick Douglass was born. And 20 minutes from there, Harriet Tubman mm-hmm. was born. So that area has a lot of history. Wow. So we're actually in a lot the, of history. We're in the mag- we're in the museum in um, Trap, Maryland. They have a um, museum there, Trap Museum. And we have wow. a, a magazine yeah. in there. So uh, it's some awesome. legacy. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, some legacy. Yes. Yeah, that that is that is huge because Earl Graves is I mean he he was just to me just a, a master, master you know businessman entrepreneur and, and just mm-hmm. you know you just learn learn so oh. much from him Le- learn so much from him yes. tell us a little bit about what's what in store in 2018 for Positive Power 21. Well, since we got, got so much film, time, yeah, we got, got we got a lot of time. We here at the ten thirty, so we can take our time. All right. <laughs> the, okay, the Cliff Notes version, because we still got to talk about Dirty Diana in the next twenty minutes. Oh, okay. Twenty two minutes. Right. I forgot your show is so nine thirty, right? So then we we roll over to my yes. show. Yeah. All right. Um. Um. What's mm-hmm. going on? Twenty eighteen is a lot going on. So much was going on that um I, I had an I had a guest on. I couldn't remember if I had one. Her mm-hmm. clients on first, or if she was on first. Maybe her, yeah, her, her her client was on first, and I was really impressed with them. So um, I told her that I, I needed some help. So you know, we talked and everything, and um, you know, worked out a deal. And she's helping me um, market the, the 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 movie, the movie Dirty Diana. But mm-hmm. it's like other things I was doing that she really was impressed with that was great for her stable of um, of clients. So uh, one of the things mm-hmm. that that's, that's been it's going to be, it's taken off already, and we already been in the studio, and that's Blacked Out Live. Blacked Out Live is kind of like a mm-hmm. spinoff from Unplug. If we, a lot of you guys remember Unplug, DC Unplug, that was uh, my, uh, my mm-hmm. baby that I, I I put together. It was like kind of like a spinoff what MTV was doing, where the artists is just there communicating with the artist. It's kind of like how Adele is right now, how she's like real transparent. Well, the artist have an opportunity to, right. you know, tell a testimony. You've been there. And so, um, and, they, mm-hmm. and they can sing two or three songs. So it's great because if they don't have an album, right. it's okay. But one thing about Blacked Out Live that's different is you definitely have to have either an LP or a, a, a catalog of music. So you, you need at least four or five songs minimum to uh, be part of Blacked Out Live. And Black Dot Live is phenomenal because what the artist been telling me is that even though it's not a live audience here, when that because I got a lot of mm-hmm. cameras in here, we 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 we, 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 we got cinema cameras, so we shooting film and we shooting tape. So they once right. they see all those cameras are lighting up and the, and we got LED lights and they're blacked out because everything's blacked out, and then they see all of my TV monitors mm-hmm. that we you know because we use a lot of monitors. Because, you know, I got vision issues. So my son has, like, perfect vision. Yeah. So no matter where he's at in the studio, he can see that everything is focused. So so he has to be here with me. So the thing is, um, they, once they see that and then that music, I have, like, the perfect sound system. We got the best mics that money can buy. And they just go into mm-hmm. their own world. So Black Dot Live is one of our big projects. And what's so great about that is... Which that, that's kind of like the nucleus of everything happening in 2012 because once uh, artists buy into Blacked Out Live, they're getting so much. They get they get the Choir Storm Apology, they get Late Night Radio with Jerry Rose Live and Friends, and also they get Beyond the Beat with Dr. Trinnell. They get three radio programs that are actually in TV version because you know we f- stream everything over Facebook Live through through television mm-hmm. cameras. So they get all that. So they either they could be in the studio for that or like most of them, when they fly in town on a Friday, they do your show from the hotel. So that's cool. So they don't have to come to the studio. Mm-hmm. And then if Dr. Trinnell is in town, they have an opportunity to do the, the television show Beyond the Beat right after they do their live concert, which means they get an opportunity right. to tell us how they feel at the time. Or if she can't make it, we can remotely bring her into the studio, which is so cool. Right. So she actually said, right. and you know the beauty of, 
Oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. She actually set up on her, in her Florida studio with her remote um, mm-hmm. camera and everything. So it's like, you know, if she can't make it, it's okay. She, we can still do the show. Right. Right. You know, the beauty of, of, of the, this internet radio and podcast, and we certainly have, you know, your live events, live things that you do, but the beauty of it is you can always go back and watch it, or you can always go back and listen to it, you know, so I think it's, and we were talking about this at one point about, you know, sometimes, um, well, not even, not even an internet radio, you know, you don't, you don't have that, or at least I don't think you have that competitive piece, because audiences can go back and listen to Survival Ready Network shows, audiences can go back and listen to uh, Positive Power 21 shows, mm-hmm. you know, they, they, they can listen to both networks or whatever networks they choose to listen to. And that's the beauty of podcasts because you can do that, you know, um, at your leisure and just be exposed to yes. uh, so many um, opportunities and so many, um, you know, uh, voices, you know, so many, so many voices and so many opportunities and so many different type mm-hmm. of shows. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's the, that's one of the things that I really, really love about right. uh, internet radio and the internet, you know, internet community. Exactly. So, um, you know, it's really, really a beautiful thing. So let's talk a little bit about that nasty girl, Dirty <laughs> Diana. Dirty Diana. With all that you do. Yes, with all that you do, and I and I want the you know, audience to understand this and to hear this. You know, we all have a challenge yes. in life, yes. but how we handle that challenge is the key. This man does so much on radio and and and, and media, just in general, just media in in general, while he is coexisting with with diabetes talk to us a little bit about diabetes and how it affects your life all right so if you if you don't mind can all i take can i can i go up a, rewind a little bit about the whole cinema thing how the cinema oh, thing do we got enough time with that absolutely okay yeah. since because dirty, uh, dirty yeah, is pretty much the, yeah dirty uh-huh. is like the last thing for your segment right so we still got a couple minutes right uh-huh. all right the deal is yeah. uh my my oldest son brandon Love mm-hmm. cinematography. He loves cinema. He just mm-hmm. loved the whole film industry. And he actually went to Morgan State University for uh, telecommunication. But he started in engineering. And he wasn't feeling that too oh, much wow. after a year or two. So then he went over to telecommunication. Mm-hmm. Morgan actually had upgraded a lot of their equipment and the radio station. Mm-hmm. Everything was being upgraded. It was running TVs through the kids' dorms. So they were able to pipe in sports and whatever they wanted in programming. So at the time, um, the, 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 when he was in school, the, the, uh, the South was starting to boom in, in rap, in uh, secular rap. So a lot of those, like the Miami mm. scene, the trap music, all that was starting to boom. They were looking for cinematographers. And by, a lot of people couldn't afford the equipment back then because those cameras were like ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 just shooting VHS, believe it or oh not. God. So uh, he was able to take mm. a lot of the equipment home. And so he was able to do like projects out of town. And so what happened was I was like, man, that stuff seems so more advanced than when I was studying it in community college. You're talking about like the early 80s. So um, mm-hmm. so I wouldn't even bother and ask him how he did some of the stuff he was doing. It was just mind blowing what he was doing with these music videos. So I'm uh, making long story short, he ended up moving into sports. ESPN picked him up, and he was doing a lot of football and basketball stuff. So then he kind of got away from the, you know, the special effects and all that stuff. So in the back of my mind, I was like, wow, it's still so interesting. But then as time like rewind now, the cameras got cheaper. Because they came up with this thing called a Red Dragon. I saw it on the movie that Charles Charles Clark was in. He actually showed it to me, too. I was like, oh, man, that's my camera. I think that thing was like 100000 but now I think you can get it for ten, twenty thousand. 20000 And now some of the better cameras you can get is like around thirty five, five thousand. 5000 Now, I have two cinema cameras here, and you can buy the kits for mm-hmm. them and build them up to make them heavy, have the right weight that you need to shoot and get the lighting that you want. Of course, you have to build the sound Mm -hmm. up, so you have to use tuners and stuff like that to catch the the audio you want. You know, I got your boom, man. So what happened is I started studying because there was so much equipment because you had to learn the audio and the visual side. So I decided to take online classes. I started went back to school, film school. I was taking classes in California. YouTube invited me to come out to New York and study. In their studios, but I couldn't do that, so they were sending me stuff 
on online because they got like YouTube University, which a lot of people don't know about. Mm-hmm. He just starts once you enroll in these courses, he just starts sending them to you. So the bottom line, I even took a course with Spike Lee, which was fantastic. So the bottom line is, wow. I, I started getting all the experience, and then I needed, I get the classroom experience, but I needed real. I need real people. I just couldn't just record my family. So what happened was a, a friend mm-hmm. of mine at my church was inviting me to these plays. So I went to visit that church, and you know, I told I said, "Oh, I'd love to, you know, work with you guys in radio." And found out that the whole church were actors and singers and performers. So, so, so then what happened was I was already filming sports events, outside sporting events. So I was kind of starting to le- learn the camera, but I didn't know anything about indoor cinema. And they were shooting plays, and then they had uh, she cast a play with um, one of the guys from The Wire, Richard Burton, who I think is, is currently with Shamrock in on The Wire, which was one of HBO's most successful long running series. And so this guy was in it. They were singing. I mean, they had some fantastic actors and actresses. And not only that, Sunday performances was out of, out of this world also. So I started getting a lot of experience on breaking the cameras down, breaking it up, adjustments on the fly, you know, you name it. So we got, my son and I got really, really good at it. And then something said, God said, um, um, you know, I, w- I want you to do a documentary. You know, and I was like, well, what? I didn't have no clue. So much stuff wrong in the world. I didn't, you know, because I was, I didn't want to be one of those kind of cinema guys that say, hey, I need all these different, I didn't want to shoot music videos because you because everybody want like 20 locations and all this angles, you know, that's too much work. And mm-hmm. they don't want to pay for it. Yes, them videos cost a million dollars. You got a million dollars? Of course they don't. So I didn't want to go that direction with music video. But what happened was I started noticing I was starting to get fatigued certain times of the day. Mm-hmm. You know, like brain tired. Like it's like it's like you need a nap type of tired. And then um, mm-hmm. um it's like it was this I don't know, it was just weird. It was like I was losing train of thought and I was like losing my balance sometime and you know, just, of course, you know, you think it's, oh, you're just working too hard, you know, because you're burning both candles on, on both ends, at different ends. Right. Then next thing I know, I was in a training program, and every time you went to a different department, they expect you to be like that that person. It's like, okay, you're in a you're in a leadership program. You're supposed to be able to do everything. You know, you can write, you can do this. And when they found out I could do everything, they really started using me. I was doing a lot of stuff for communications, external communication, internal communication. I was building websites, PowerPoint. Mm-hmm. I was doing training presentations for for the, uh, those, those charity events that they host. You know, I built, I built a radio podcast for them. I I I, I, develop, I produced some, a morning show and some other stuff. It was just so much stuff that I was doing while I was in this program. It was like th- for three years. I was like, and I was building positive power at the same time. So then what happened is my glucose right. levels was must have been like going up and down. Because sometimes I have a burst of energy, then I'd be exhausted. Next thing I know, I was walking with my director because I got transferred because I couldn't handle the job I was in, which I loved that job because it was fast paced, but I just couldn't remember nothing. I right. 15 projects. I don't even remember nobody's uh-huh. name. So I went to work for this guy. Mm-hmm. He was real cool. You know, he had a kid, my daughter's age and everything. Mm-hmm. The next thing, him and I was going to a meeting with the commissioner because we was working for the commissioner. I tripped. When he went to look back to see what I tripped on, there was nothing there. He said, what happened? I said, it's like my leg oh, just gave up. He said, man, you need to go to the nurse. You, you're not looking good. Went to the nurse. She said, she checked my blood, my, my vital signs. Everything was good. Check. said, let me check your blood level. Look. Your glucose. She said, oh, my God. She said, mm-hmm. did you drive? I said, yeah. She said, how, how did you? I said, I've been like this all week. <laughs> she said, I need to call the ambulance. She, I was like, no, nah, I, could, I could make it. She said, well, can you call your doctor? I said, yeah, I can make it. So anyway, long story short, it mm-hmm. turned out that I, I had, like, you know, um, diabetes, like the early stages of it, type 2. Wow. And um, mm-hmm. so the doctor said, well, good news is, you know, we caught it early and, you know, with dieting and exercising, you, you know, you can get, you can reverse it because the medication was expensive. So anyway, the, the fast forward right. to all of that, I remember I was sitting in church and we got a pretty phenomenal church. They, they have a very strong presentation. You know, they got, it's like a million dollar church. He pumped thousands oh, wow. of dollars in the sound state. So you always get blown away with the, the video presentations and the sound. And, and you just start listening. You can hear God speaking to you like the angels talking. So next thing I know, um, God is mm. saying, God, you know, 
you know, what am I going to do with this Christian radio station? I, you know, I, I don't know anything what these people are going through. You know, I kind of grew up, when, you know, my both my parents worked and, you know, we drove Volvos and we took vacations and, you know, you know, <laughs> like, you know, we have meals. You know, we got a lot of gifts for Christmas. You know, my neighborhood had administrators, principal, mailmen, BG&E guys, you know, seeing, you know, telephone people, everybody, two-parent household. Yeah. I was like, how can I help these people? Mm-hmm. I don't just, you know, I, I, I never was on drugs. I was, you know, drunk. I mean, I, I womanized, but everybody did that. And um, so mm-hmm. I'm thinking that to my, you know, because God is talking to me, and he's like, you know, the word mm-hmm. patience keep popping up. Next thing I know, here I am, you know, battling for my life. You know, I was battling for my life like you wouldn't mm-hmm. believe it. It's like that thing was spiraling out of control. But the big secret is you don't look like you feel. And that's the thing about why. Mm-hmm. And that's the main reason why I came up with the film. Because at my job, it mm-hmm. was treating me like I was that same guy that can crank out 25, 30 cases and run, help them mm-hmm. run the front office, give them advice, be the go-to person. You know, that person, you know, we need some graphics, Jerry. Do graph. Oh, we need help with our website. Do that. Oh, we've never seen this before. Oh, I'll figure it out. You know, you know, and my wife, same thing. It was just so used to, uh, honey, uh, my dad's power's not working. He need, You need to come up and fix his, his electrical box. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Oh, the roof is leaking. You think you're right. going to fix dad's roof? Uh, my, the car not working. Dad, can you go fix the car? You know, it's like everybody think I can do everything. But it was like, I could. I was barely getting out of bed. I felt like I played. I felt like I was a running back and had thirty carries every day against an NFL team. That's how. That's how much pain I was in. Couldn't figure it out. Of course, you're talking to your doctor. They looking at you like you're crazy. Oh, that's not diabetes. Mm-hmm. Like, are you kidding me? I didn't feel like this before. Oh, uh, and I say, well, Doc, I'm having mm-hmm. some pain. Right. No, that's not part of. It. But see, what they don't understand is, and what I didn't understand, the general practitioners are not really that educated in it. They only know enough to put you on medication until you get better. And they keep trying mm. different ones until you mm-hmm. say, oh, yeah. And most of their patients are older. They always blame them loss of memory from dementia or something like that. From Oh, oh you got that's arthritis. No, my whole left arm mm-hmm. is numb. That's not arthritis. <laughs> I can't feel my foot. You know, they kind of, and I said, look, I just lost, my buddy was a, a, a professional football player. He just lost two toes. He was a marathon runner. And you tell me exercise supposed to help. So now you're panicking now. All right, two of my best friends just died two years ago. Uh, their wives and everybody was part of their support group. That didn't work. You know, what is going on? So now you're scared mm-hmm. because you're seeing people around you who you know who was suffering from that gone. So then the bottom line, what I found out from doing this film is the very people who are supposed to help you and support you don't know nothing about it either. Because the doctors don't tell you everything you need to know. It's like you, you're your only, you're your best advocate. And and then then you have people sit around saying, "Oh, I got diabetes, and I can fly like an eagle, or oh, I can drive like Mario right. Angretti, or not." You know, but it's like everybody's not the same. I found out this one lady; she looks all nice and neat, her hair's all pretty, dress her butt off. She told me her body looked mm-hmm. like a pin a pin cushion. She got needle marks all over her body, <laughs> trying to find a new spot every right. day to stick herself three times a day. I was like, whoa, mm-hmm. you would never s- think that if you saw her. He was like, oh, she looked right. like, like, you know, like, you know, for her age, you know, you, you say, wow, she looked like a management, management, the, you know. So, and, and it's the thing, people so do they're not, not, not wearing her pain, not wearing, wearing right. their pain. So not wearing, but they're she found a way, pain, but they're not wearing. see, that's the thing, a lot of them have had it mm-hmm. so long, they found a way how to manage, you just have to find that balance. And what I've learned from being on these Facebook groups, so many people are like, they can't afford the medication, or they, they can't afford the right medication, or they can't afford to have that, that diet, so they're still eating processed foods, because fresh foods cost mm-hmm. money, and time. Yeah, and you got to exercise. Yeah. You can't put certain stress on the body because if you get injured, it takes a really... Because I was a marathon runner. I, I got wow. into marathons. Mm-hmm. So the whole bottom line of the film is is to to educate those who are non-diabetic who are living with someone right. with it. because my best friend told me that they had no idea what his brother was going through. He remember one day his brother was walking down the street and his ankle snapped. And he fell to the ground. Wow. 
and he said he was never the same again after that. He said he he, he died within a matter of weeks. A matter of wow. weeks. Wow. Wow, that's really huge. Right. Yeah, so yeah, that's kind really of huge. Stories. All right, Jerry, you know what? We're going to pause it right there for Indeed. a few minutes, and then we're going to pick it up on the flip side as we continue uh, on your show on Positive Power 21. Indeed. Can you hang tight for just a little bit? I because I really want to take a moment to just. Thank you so much. Don't go anywhere. I want to take a moment to thank you so much for being a guest on the Paula G Show and the first show of 2018. Also, thank you so very much for giving me an opportunity to having that faith in me and giving me the opportunity to be a part of the Positive Power 21. Thank you so much. Positive Power 21 family. I can't even talk. (laughs) Positive Power 21 family. Um, Thank you. I really, truly appreciate um, everything that you have done. And ladies and gentlemen, we have been talking this evening with Jerry Royce, live of Positive Power 21, and Clark Garrett, also of Survival Radio Network, two gentlemen who have made it possible for me to do what it is that I do. And whether you are logged on live, you're listening on your phone or in archives, thank you all so much for listening. Remember, the playbacks can be heard at www.apologies.com at uh, com, You can also go to uh, Positive Power 21 to hear the playback of this show as well. Always in podcasts, Stitcher.com, TuneIn Radio, or Spreaker Radio. Search for Paula G. Also, episodes are in SoundCloud, the Paula G, uh, Paula G voice. Also, don't forget our show to follow tomorrow evening right here on Survival Radio Network. Late Night Real Estate Talk with Ramon Tooks and Julia Stander. And, uh, oh, actually, that's tonight. That's tonight in 30 minutes at 10 o'clock from 10 to 11 o'clock on SRN2. Late Night Real Estate Talk with Ramon Tooks and Julia Standard in 30 minutes at 10 o'clock. Also, my good friend, I can't forget my good friend over on Survival Radio Christian Network, Faith Walk with Joyce White, Tuesday evenings, 7.30 p.m. Make sure that you check her out. And also my good friend Christine Lockett, whose show airs right after Joyce's on Survival Radio Christian Network. Thank you all so very much, Positive Power 21 family as well, Survival Radio Network family, for tuning in. Remember, remember, the greatest conversation you will ever have is the one that takes place in between your ears because it affects your daily life and ultimately your destiny. What are you speaking to yourself? What is your I am? I leave you this evening with Streetwise Izzo. Until next time. Amen.
brand new, so incredible, but it's playable. What I found is nothing comes close to the way that you have loved me. This feeling you give me is pure and true. You make me brand new, so incredible, but it's playable. Nothing comes close to the way that you have loved me This feeling you give me is pure and true You made me brand new, so incredible Unexplainable What I found is Nothing comes close to the way that you have loved me This feeling you give me is pure and true You made me brand new, so incredible Unexplainable Can you feel the power? Feel the power A double XI. Can you feel the power? Feel the power A double XI. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Podcast. Hey, what's up, family? What's going on? Welcome, welcome to Positive Power Double XI Christian Media. You're listening to Late Night with Jerry Woods Live Worldwide and on the G from Survival Radio. That's right, we just had to finish up an interview on Survival Radio Network. That was part one. Part two is over here on Positive Power. So thank you for joining us. I know a lot of you were listening to us on Facebook Live, Spricker Radio International. Thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate you guys. We love you. Again, happy 2018. So let's get our praise on. Dear Father, please help me to rest in your happiness, to allow a smile to linger on my lips, to dwell within a wonderful memory, to walk back through sunlit places. Please help me awake from hope. To engage in life and variety, to take the beauty of others' joys, to touch the souls of those we meet. Please help me to sing with faith, carry the truth close to my heart, to rejoice in a new life and peace as I age. Please help me to indulge in love, to breathe in the sweetness of intimacy, taste the kindness of friendship, to feel the warmth of embrace. Please help me not to miss a single drop of heaven. Catch this moment in a drink in the great joy of life. All right, total life changes. Daynet Watson. That's right. Check her out at lose five pounds in five days. Info. Church Life Two. That Church Life Two with Ter- Teresa B. Howell. Find it on Amazon. You want to read about some drama in the church, in the pulpit, in the pews? Check out that Church Life. 
number two. All right, coming up on January 20th, Kent Osborne won't be there. Christian rapper, minister, is right from Prison of Power. He's going to be there Saturday, January 20th, 6 o'clock, at Parmy Books, in Parmy Incorporated, nonprofit, will be hosting a literary celebration of miracles. This is a celebration of the completion of the inspirational Misfits book series and unveiling of the newest book called Misfits, The Miracle Revealed by Jessica W.A. Hotsmith and Alex J. And she has an awesome testimony. That's right, you can catch on YouTube. And that's going down in North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina. All right? Catch, they're going to have dinner and artists and authors and book signers and picture taking. Come on out, have fun. You in the area, go to EmpireMeBooks.com and sign up for more information at EmpireMeBooks.com. All right. WealthDadSystem.com. WealthDadSystem.com. You trying to play that lottery today? That's right. Powerball. $460 million. That's right. In case you don't win, go out to WealthDadSystem.com and let James the Shade teach you how to become a millionaire. Along while he's becoming one. All right, can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? The power of 21. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Trinity. That's right, we all need to be lifted up and encouraged at all times. The Bible is a great source for encouragement. What you say, robot? You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. That's my boy. That's right, robot said we all need to be lifted up and encouraged at all times. The Bible is a great source for encouragement. The Bible is the living word of God. It feeds us through the promise of God found in Scripture. In Philippians 4, 4, 7 reads for 2018. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again. Rejoice and let everyone see that you are unselfish and considering all you do. Remember that the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs. Don't forget to thank Him for His answers. You do this. You do this. You will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. Peace, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Praise and worship time. John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 11, 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Woo! Don't forget tomorrow night we got Curry Hines and his, his morning hair show team going to be here starting at 9 30. That's right. But just, you know, I broadcast at 9 o'clock, praising worship time. Woo! Almighty Father, creator of heaven and earth, everything in between, we humbly come before you with thanksgiving in our hearts, asking for your never-ending mercy. We lift your name on high, above any name has ever existed. Our Father, our creator, we ask you to bless, protect, and pour your supernatural favor upon us, our children, our spouses, our friends, our neighbors, our enemies, our bosses. God, we ask you today for divine intervention in our lives. We ask you to touch all the areas of our lives. Touch our parents, our mothers, our fathers, even the ones we don't know. Be it be a new job, promotion, freedom from debt, be building up our relationship and our spouses and our friends, fathers, situations. Any situation you touch, we believe will never remain the same. Father in heaven, let your will be done. Let your will be done. In our lives, as your decision in our lives is the best will always be the best. Please send double portions of anointings and blessings in the quickest time in your name, as your name is being worshipped and glorified by multitudes. In the name of your Son, our personal Savior, Jesus Christ, may the church say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Folks, God is going to be shifting things and let things work in your favor. God closes doors no man can open. God opens doors no man can close. If you need God to open doors for you, call on him. I am that I am. In Deuteronomy 28, 7 says, As your enemies gather to plan your downfall and your setback, God 
She'll confuse and dismiss them in seven directions. So they be blessed seven times. May you be blessed seven times more until the blessed call you blessed. God be with our families from the youngest to the oldest, lighting up our relationships, sowing peace and grace into our troubles. God be with our families, we've been loving our work, our rest, and our play. May robots say, You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. All right, y'all, we got a great show tonight. We got Paula G, the voice. She's here to finish interviewing me. So let's let Paula, Paula in. What's up, Paula? You ready for part two? I am ready for part two. And can I just say thank you so much? That was awesome. You're welcome. And congratulations awesome. to you. Yeah. I, think, I think we learned a thing or two about you this evening. You did? What did you learn? <laughs> I, well, I did not know that Positive Power started out as a newsletter, and I did not know your your the impact that Earl Graves had on you. Yeah, yeah, that you know was the crazy. influence that you know that Earl. Yeah, yeah that, that started. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Yeah, he really got that blood flowing with the entrepreneurship because I was going crazy because I was reading about black folks that had like. Real businesses, mm-hmm. you know, we, you know, when you're growing up, you know, you see, you, know, you don't see us, you know, maybe like you go to a ball game, you see some guys selling hot dogs and t-shirts and stuff. And that was like, you know, maybe guys selling the cars, you know, who owned the car dealership, not I, maybe the used car right. lots. You just didn't see that, you know, Yeah. no black pilots, nobody on their own plane. You know, except for the rappers and they mm-hmm. perpetrating. So I don't know. It's he just man. Yeah. When I that cat, he just he and I told him he saw it in my eyes what he he he, he ignited in me. And he, he signed my magazine yeah. too, my magazine that I produced with my own hand. Mm-hmm. And uh it's to my, my brother and I. I gotta find that magazine. It's probably a, I think it might be the one that's in our frame because we framed it. But um mm-hmm. That was that was something, man. And then met him twice. You know, met him twice at that. All right. Yeah, that's absolutely awesome. Absolutely. Uh, how was your day? Had a great day. Well, you know, back to work after the mm-hmm. holidays always a story. Yeah, right? I know. Getting back in the groove, but it was good to have the rest and come back refresh. You know, get back into right. the saddle. You know, as they say. Mm-hmm. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Mine was similar. But you know, can I, I can I just have to say this? Can I I have a testimony this evening and I have to share it. Well, it's your show. Can I think of- it's your show. <laughs> <laughs> so I leave work today. You know, I'm here in the Atlanta area. And it just God is just Oh Jesus. Um I'm coming down for those of you who are familiar with the Atlanta metro area. 285, which is similar to your Beltway in the D.C. area. hate it. And, yeah, and I'm coming, oh, my gosh, yes, the traffic's just awful. So I'm coming around 285, and there's this huge wad of that, you know, that string that they use when they're packing up boxes, um, you know, that twine. I mean, it's like a tumbleweed size of, of this ball of string that has fallen off the truck mm. on the road. And I couldn't, I didn't have enough time to kind of swerve to go around it because of the, the heaviness of the traffic. And I panicked. And I panicked because years ago when I lived in Maryland area and I was on my way to work to Towson, one of those huge packing sheets came flew off of a truck mm. under my car My car caught fire. Now, I was on 695, Mm. Beltway going around. I was on 695 on my way uh, from work in Towson, because I worked at Towson at the time. I lived in Edgewood, Maryland. Um, My car caught fire. One minute, the paper goes, you know, the the, well, was a huge sheet of that stuff, goes under my car, and then the next thing, all I see are flames in the windshield of the car. Mm. Thank God I was by myself, because at the time, my baby, my babies, who are not babies anymore, were babies at the time, and thank God I was by myself. There was a 
a, a Mack truck behind me, and I could see him motioning for me to, to, to get over. You know, I pulled over. He put, you know, he put the fire out. I had to get a new car. But that was a very traumatic experience. Yeah, so all of this is going through my head today as I'm driving over this tumbleweed of this twine. And I look in my rearview mirror, and I don't see it. Mm you know, come out from under my car. So that tells me somehow it has gotten hooked underneath my car. Mm -hmm. So the traffic is heavy. I'm trying to move, pull over to the next exit. I said, good, I can get off here at Atlanta Road, the next exit. Well, I missed the exit because mm -hmm. I couldn't get over, you know, quick enough. So I had to go down to the next exit. I go down to the next exit. I pull off. I can't, there's no place right there to stop. So I wind up pulling into a Home Depot parking lot. Hmm. Terry, I pull into the parking lot. I get out of the car. I have to get under the car because sure enough, that whole tumbleweed size twine, whatever it is, has gotten caught underneath my car because I could start to smell it burn or something hmm. burning wow. under there. It gets caught underneath my car. So I'm under there. Now, you know, it's a bit of cold down here. It's like yeah. it's single digits. I'm under there, and I'm trying to get this out. I finally was able to, to, to you know, pull it out from underneath the car. Mm. I go back to get into the car. I don't know if I closed it. I don't know if the wind closed it. I don't know how it got closed, but the door of the car was closed. Mm. And somehow it locked. My, my, my door is locked. Now, mind get you, it's bitter here. cold. Mm. So, you know, my windows are up. Right. It's bitter cold out. My car is locked. It's running. I had pulled kind of, you know, semi off into the parking lot. So I'm standing there, and my first thought was I was going to burst into tears. I said, okay, wait a minute. Let me hold it. Mm. Let me just breathe. I know God has a ram. I know he has a ram in the bush because, first of all, of all the places for me to pull into, I pulled into the Home Depot That's parking right. lot. Mm. So let me just you know, let me just breathe. So I went into Home Depot and, you know, I, I shared what happened and a couple of the gentlemen said, well, you know, is your, is, are one of your windows cracked? I said, no, there, it's freezing out there. The windows are up. It's cold. They come out, they get some little, little Jimmy thing, whatever it is. And they come out. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you. We come out, the window is cracked. There's mm. a little, you know, a little crack in my, just enough for him to get whatever it was that he got in there to Jimmy that lock open. Oh, wow. I didn't ask no questions of where he got it from, how he got it, or why he was such an expert at doing it. <laughs> but I know that man opened the door of yeah. my car. And I was just, and then, you know, I Praise started God. thinking, you know, had I not missed that first exit mm -hmm. and pulled off because of that particular exit, th there was nothing. There was no one. I would have just been stranded out there yeah, you know no what i'm phone, saying no and then when i pulled off in this exit you know I, I had to you know pass a few stores and whatnot and i couldn't turn in because the track there were things that were blocking my path from turning off sooner than i had um turned than i would have turned off in the home Depot. you follow what i'm saying because yeah. i had options but mm -hmm. i couldn't get to them because of the other traffic. So it almost forced me into the parking lot of Home Depot. And I'm like, look at God. God, because you know, he knows what's going to happen before we know what's going to happen. And I, I promise you, I promise you, he orchestrated that whole thing. When I hit that whole tumbleweed thing and I was trying to pull over, I couldn't get off on that first um, exit because he knew there wasn't, there wasn't help there for me. And then I tried to get off on the second exit, and there were, there were areas that I could have turned, but, you know, he orchestrated it so I couldn't turn, so I would wind up where I needed to wind up to get the help that I needed. Mm -hmm. And I say that to say that sometimes when we are on this journey in life, God is steering us and he's orchestrating things. And at the moment, it may not seem like it. Because when I missed that first exit, I'm like, this thing is going to catch on fire. My car is going to catch on fire again. You know, I'm, I'm, all this stuff is going through my head. I'm not going to be able to make it to the next, you know, ex, next exit. But God knew what he was doing. Right. You know, he knew what he was doing. He knew what he needed to do to get me to wind up in that Home Depot parking lot for those men to come out and, and um, you know, help me to uh, unlock my car. And they did it inside of 
I don't know, a minute or so. You know, <laughs> once he got that little thing in there and he did it inside of a minute or so. And I gave both of them a little something. And they were like, right. no, no, no. And I'm like, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. I've got right. to give you something. I've got to bless you. That's you know, right. you bless me. I've got to bless you. So, you know, I hope that helps somebody and I hope that encourages somebody that sometimes when we are on this journey of life and we're faced with mm-hmm. obstacles and, and, and situations that cause us to be stressed or panic, to just be still, be aware of your surroundings, and look and see what it is that God has placed in your path to help you overcome whatever that ob- obstacle is. Yeah, right. Because I truly believe that's what he did for me today. I mm-hmm. truly believe that. And, and, and then when I lock myself out, I'm thinking, oh, my Lord, this is my first night back live. I'm going to be stuck in this parking lot, mm. you know, for three hours. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, I'm going to miss my show. You know, all of this stuff started, you know, I, going I, I used my to head. fear that. You know, I fear that with my Jeep. Because my Jeep, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's like it's like they didn't really do nothing super duper fa- fancy to this. Because it's one of their bigger trucks. And um, so whenever yeah. when I got to get out to go get my daughter, like I got to go fan her down or something. I always, and I got to mm-hmm. leave her running. I always crack the window where I can get my arm in there, you know. And then um, yeah. I, and, back. I always fear you know, that. the funny thing, I, I usually do, but I was in such... A panic, thinking that you know, having flashbacks of fire, 25 years yeah. ago that this thing is going to ca- catch on fire, mm-hmm. and it was cold, and I was in such a rush to get out of the car and get that that wad or whatever it was from under my car that I didn't do that because usually I'll put the window all the way mm-hmm. down. Always my you know? fear. Um, yeah. Yes, yes, but oh my gosh! So yeah, that 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 preceded um, you know me being on air today. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you made but, it. you know, God is good. God all is right. good. That's all I can say. He's got you. He's got you. It may not seem like he's got you, y'all, but he's got He's got, he got us. You. Yeah, he's you got us. Yeah, we sometimes we you may do, not see it. Yes. Yeah, you, you, sometimes you do get a little like, ah, uh, you know, what's happening, God? And, and you think about the, mm-hmm. you know, just like um, I did a little piece for, um, and I know when we was on your show, we was talking about some of my projects for 2018. And one of the projects that mm-hmm. I started back in, in 2015, when I was really going mm-hmm. through cinematography, um, yeah, I said I wanted uh, God told me to do a documentary because of what was going on with the black males of America and police brutality. Mm-hmm. And I said I need to do my little part. And I'm always trying to think outside the box. I said, what I'm going to do? I'm going to, um, you know, get some young men who are doing some positive things. Because I remember, I remember this was years ago, and it was this guy. Mm-hmm. He owned his own cab company. He owned his own cab. And I remember he told me, right. you know, he was just, we were just so blown away how much the talent that these young kids at our church had. We used to let them have their own church service. They, Fifth Sunday was theirs. And it was like one of the best services. Right. And he said, Jerry, you know what? If it wasn't for these kids here, man, because he see a lot driving his cab in the street. He said, man, I would think that this earth is doomed. That's what he told me. This earth mm-hmm. was doomed. Mm-hmm. Mankind didn't have a chance because mm-hmm. of the, the streets and it's going to pieces and the churches are not making a difference. That's what he said. He said he 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 had no hope. But he said when when, uh, when you know because of that, he felt a little better about the world. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I could feel him what he was saying. At that point, so I'm saying, oh, yeah. there's some young people out here doing some really great things, but nobody talks about them, you know. So, right, I, I said I'm going to work in threes, and I'm gonna find three young men. I know they're gonna be led to me, and I'm gonna give them an opportunity to go on camera and tell, give their testimony where they came from and where they are today. And, and it's funny because each one of these guys that was that's on my first docu series called Who I Am, they were reared by by single moms or, you know, mm. split custodies and they're all mm-hmm. college graduates. One of them actually has his masters. Mm-hmm. Just he graduated well, at the time he didn't have it, but he did graduate this past summer. And they all doing great and they're not just thinking about themselves, like spending their money on fancy cars. They they talking about what they want to do for mankind. Which I think is like right. wow. You know, they're not talking about and of course, you know, you got some guys that, you know, they want to coach and be part of these young men's lives and everything. But these guys are like thinking at, at a whole different level. So I was just so excited. Right. But I didn't really know what to do with that film. I had the title, you know, I, mm-hmm. I had everything. Only thing was I was still learning equipment. So I did have little issues fighting with the audio. And, and then, I, of course, I wanted to be in black and white. 
So I'm still testing some stuff like that. And but the, it's their store. I didn't want them to be the distraction to their store, so that's why I put it in black and white. So and it's a couple little mm-hmm. things I need to do because I was coaching one of the guys and I didn't catch myself in all the edits. So mm-hmm. uh, right. But I'm really excited about it. It's going to launch on YouTube Live. So we're going to announce the date. It's mm-hmm. going to be uh, run doing Black History Month, and uh, we'll make an announcement when it's going to arrive. It'll probably be a Friday night before our show. And we have something to talk about. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, and it's pretty long, too. It's about an hour. Yeah. It's short. It's still considered. You know, I, I was calling it a short film. But it's, right. it is my first one. And um, mm-hmm. now since I, I'm getting past this one, I know what to do with the next one. But I always believe, you know, let people tell their story because there's going to be something they say that's going to impact somebody. Yeah. And I don't want to be the one that's directing the wrong stuff out of the movie. So I just let it ride. Each one of them brought different, something mm-hmm. different to the plate. Which is like right, incredible. and you're telling your story. You telling know, it's story. it's your story that 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 you're 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 telling. You know, and it's we can all learn something from everyone. We can all learn something, you know, from each other. I think I've shared on one of the shows. You know, I'm in the process of learning um, ballroom dance, or more specifically, Detroit ballroom and Chicago stepping, mm-hmm. and I'm learning in the process of learning this dance that. You can learn something from everyone because everyone has something to bring to the table to round out your experience mm-hmm. and your expertise. Exactly. Like you, like you were sharing on my show earlier about um, YouTube University and how they were reaching out to you to, um, you know, come to take some of the classes and how you were taking some of the classes online and the different opportunities, taking advantage of all of those opportunities, learning from all of those different resources to develop you as a media uh, personality, radio, television, you know, doing the blacked out live, you know, all of those different things that the films that you're doing, you know, um, we, we can gain something from every experience that we have in life, whether it's a positive experience or a negative negative experience, we can all extract something from those experiences to mold and shape us and develop us into who and what it is that God has purposed each and every one of us mm-hmm. to, to do and to be. That's right. You know, that's oh, huge. That's yeah. That's right. <laughs> And was, I know you and I was talking earlier, and I was telling you, um, uh, one of my one of my best friends. He's like a brother. We've been friends since high mm-hmm. school. We went to a, a engineering high school together, Polytechnic Institute. For those of you familiar with Charm City's high school system, great magnet schools and engineering programs. Yeah. it's almost like yeah. a private school, but it's run by the city. So anyway, um, mm-hmm. he, I called him today because I missed his birthday. So I said I was going to call him and say Happy New Year and see what he he always working on a project, but he never finishes them because he always gets something distracts him. <laughs> whether, it's, something. Yeah, mm-hmm. whether it's a long distance job or his baby mama or his son got some stuff going on. You know, so I called him right. and he was really upbeat. And the first thing he said, Jerry, you only call nobody no more. I said, dude, I just spoke to you this summer. <laughs> <laughs> then I called you. He said, no, I called you. I said, oh, okay. So anyway, I was calling to see if he was ready to start talking about his project, if he was ready to start casting and that kind of thing. Because he's a playwright, and he he wrote a book before in honor of his dad because his dad was an educator. Right. And um, wow. so, he, so he's, he still got some projects going on. He said he wants to sit down and talk. And uh, he, he, you know, he was really hype about the radio station and everything. He was, he said, he remember mm-hmm. when I was talking about this before this stuff even happened. He remembered this. He said he because mm. he, he was there when I built the radio station and one at the school. I built the radio station that actually, you know, received. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was a walkie-talkie and record player, and I was able to use the parts to build our actual radio. It picked up the sports channel. And I I went right. to school and went on to Johns Hopkins to compete, but I lost to a kid that mm-hmm. uh, was growing some plants in the dark. So, uh, <laughs> so who knows? He grows some plants in the dark. <laughs> yeah, I lost to that kid. So they they probably thought I was working with a kid, but I actually built everything because mm-hmm. they had working antennas that lit up. They probably thought I was a kid, you know. So anyway, make a long story short about that. Um, he was just 
so happy that I stuck this thing out and I sent it to him and he mm-hmm. said, my God, dude, he said, you sound like a professional radio guy. <laughs> it was like, mm-hmm. I was mad. <laughs> <Say, man>. guess what? <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess what? Yes. Yeah. So now he's excited but, um, because I, he, because uh, I, I was talking again, to him about the cinema stuff. Cause that's what yeah. we, what we work, we talking about partnering together. So I sent him some of my stuff, you know, and he was like really, really impressed. So he said, yeah, we got to talk. We got to talk. So it's good when you got friends that's on board of what you what you doing. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes yeah. you get that. Yeah. You really don't. Absolutely. All right. And, you know, it's all about those making those connections and you know those relationships. That's right. You know, hey, and, Dr. And just Trinell. Keeping... Dr. Trinell is out there. What's up, Dr. Trinell? So that so yeah, so I see Everett Drake is out there this, yeah, this uh, evening. Drake. Patrice, Denny's out there. Yeah, Evangelist Falana is my, out there. Yeah, my, my old sister, boss out so. there. What's up, Janice Young? That's mm-hmm. my old boss. She's funny. She's a crack Cassandra. me up. Cassandra Webb. Yeah, yeah. Cassandra, Cassandra Webb mm-hmm. is coming here. Bring her nephew, her godson, to Blacked Out Live. Mm. That's right. Yeah. I'm so excited about these programs. Prophet Michael Willis. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Prophet Michael out are. there, Big Mike. I know we we started talking about some of the stuff we was working with, and I know some people are just coming in because they used to us coming on at, yeah. at nine o'clock, nine thirty. But uh, one of the things that um, I wanted to just push what was, was so f- fantastic about having Doctor Trinell as a manager is that sometimes when you have somebody mm-hmm. that's there, they kind of um, help you stay the course and make you um, I won't say liable, but Kind of like keep you on task. Accountable. Yep, make accountable. accountable. Make yep. you keep accountable. Which yeah. I've always been good mm-hmm. because I know I work my projects according to where I am. And like right now, mm-hmm. we still we still got like a, a whole bunch of segments to shoot for uh, Dirty Diana because we got some outside stuff. There's a lot of stuff we need, a lot of graphics we need for the narration. I want people to sit there watching mm-hmm. us talk. So I do have some some graphics for the narration because just like I told this story on your show about my my journey with diabetes is like it's going to be more of a compelling story when I tell it in the movie because it's going to be some right. stuff that nobody knew. You know, that's why I was telling people mm-hmm. one time I was going to call it a big secret. But I said, no, nah, because one, it is a big secret because a lot of people don't really know how dangerous it is because it's like everybody kept telling me, they mm-hmm. always had their look on their face like, Oh, you, you need to be careful. You got to take care of yourself. Anybody telling you that, but nobody's right. trying to help you take care of yourself. You know, it was like mm-hmm. they got even cakes. what you need to take yeah, care they of yourself. Yeah, they got cake surprises around. Like even at work, they everybody bringing Krispy Kremes around. And this thing, nobody going to say, oh, yeah, we're going to stop. We're going to bring you something too, man. This is a non-sugar type, uh, whatever. You know, it's mm-hmm. like people want you to, to look out for yourself, but what are they really doing to support you? You know, how are they going to help you get right. through your work, your day? Because you're not the same person you used to be. You know, you're not that. Right. You know, you can do 20 hours in eight hours. You can't. you lucky if you can mm-hmm. get three out of eight hours, you know, cause, because you're mm-hmm. sick. And and it's, and what they don't remember and, and know that diabetes is one of the, the leading reasons why people are dying from heart attacks. And a lot of people don't know that. Because right. the the body, the heart can't take on some of the complications that it gives you. You know, the circulation mm. is one of them. You know, it's like it's like a lot of people got. You know, you look at your artery. This thing is like a like a like a how can I put it? Like a line of like say you pushing water. If there's mm-hmm. something in there, and then the water gonna come out on the other end. So imagine how much your heart is gonna get. It, blood, it needs blood. And pump it through your system, right. the circulation system, your circulating system, the hormones, your liver, your pancreas, and that's what we get. I don't get into like the real science part of it, but it's a guy that was on YouTube really broke it down real simple, and I was going to use his analogy that you got to look at it like a big city, and you got that pipeline running underneath that's carrying your water and your waste. Mm-hmm. Just look at it like that. Each building is really is is receiving water pushing out waste mm-hmm. and that's how your body yeah works. and just imagine if it's something else inside the pipes besides water well that's what it is with your blood mm-hmm. it's something else in there with the blood and not just blood it's like all that sugar that's supposed to be helping you helping you um get energy 
Well, it doesn't go nowhere. Mm-hmm. It just stays there. And the more sugar you eat, the more it builds up. And it starts getting sticky and gooky. And next thing you know, you're sluggish mm-hmm. and you're tired. And if you're not exercising, this is going to be even worse. And then they use the pills right. to help push the water through. It's almost like, okay, the water's not moving through the city fast. Let's put a turbo in. Let's drop this pill in. This pill got acid in it. It's going to help push the water through quicker. And we know that people got to drink it, but at least it's getting to their house and they got fresh water. You know, got chemicals right. in it. Well, that's what that's what's happening when you put when you inject yourself with insulin because your body is insulin resistant. It's not producing enough. So the insulin that we buy we get from the doctors is actually pig insulin. Yes. Pig mm. insulin. Not human insulin. Pig insulin. Mm. So a lot of people have complications think, from that. You know, which I was wondering. You know, and, and what you what you said earlier uh on my show I think is so important about you really have to be your strongest advocate. You really have to be your your, your best advocate for yourself, and you have to do your research. And that's something that I've discovered over the years. You know, there was a time when you could go to the doctor, and the doctor could sit there, would, would I won't say could, the doctor would sit there and tell you all about yourself. Yeah, not now. You know, all you, yeah, well, how, you know, how are you doing with this, and how, how are you managing mm-hmm. that? Now... You almost have to sit there and, and tell, tell the doctor about yeah. yourself. Half of them don't really have no you know? really don't real have no real communication skills. You know, they just That's true. Um, yeah. You got a worried doctor. She just gonna be finding like what magic pill is gonna take care of you. You know, and one thing mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. don't like blame them from everything because I know for a fact, and this is like majority of Americans, especially when you start getting out of your 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 athletic age you really don't do enough exercising to really help take care of yourself it's like they're saying you don't they tell right. the kids do 30 minutes of exercise a day well what are you doing you come home from work after mm-hmm. sitting down all day come home fix a meal and then lay down and watch tv right you know the only exercise right. you're getting is, is getting off the couch or getting out of your chair going to the bathroom or getting something to eat and that's not so, enough right. and our bodies weren't designed like that yep and we're wondering why yeah. a lot of us is not like to so many problems now people are living longer but that's because of the medication is prolonging their life that's the right. deal it's prolonging their mm-hmm. life yeah. but they in so much pain i mean you, you go inside some of these places the people are like they got so much pain man the arthritis is killing them you know that that, yeah. that, that rheumatoid arthritis is no joke and that's some of the complications mm-hmm. you get um, even with diabetes, you don't even have to be in your 60s right. or something. You can get that baby in your 40s, you know. Right, exactly, exactly. You know, I did a, a video earlier today. Did you see it? I did a video earlier today where I was training with my trainer, but I was sharing with the audience about your guest appearance on my show this mm-hmm. evening. And I was also on it. I also was saying for 2018, challenging the audience to be intentional about self-care yes being intentional about self-care and making a point to be intentional about self-care you know Mm. what is it that that you have to do as an individual to take care of yourself and not feel bad about it Mm-hmm. You know, and not feel because sometimes I think we're 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 led to feel guilty or selfish because we're taking care of ourselves. But if we don't take care of ourselves, you know, God only gave us one body. He gave us this temple. What does the scriptures mm-hmm. would tell us? Our bodies are a temple. He gave us this temple. Right. You know, we only have one temple. And you know, I for one, and I know a lot of those that are listening are not interested in God giving us an eviction notice because we have not taken care of the temple that he has, that he has given us to reside in. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we have to do those things um, to take care of ourselves. And part of that, as I have learned over the years as well, with my own, you know, ailments or aches and pains and challenges, is really I've had to become, just like you said on the show, mm-hmm. my, my best advocate, research, yeah. and educate myself on what it is that ails me and what's best for me so that when I go to the doctor, um, you know, I can share with the doctor what those things are because I can no longer assume 
you know, that he or she knows. Mm -hmm. With the exception of my primary care, my primary care doctor, I've been with him now almost 20 years. Wow. That man knows me, and he's, and he's old school. Yeah. You know, he's old school, even though he, he's challenged with, you know, the new technology and everything, <laughs> and he has to keep up with this, that, and the other thing. But he's still, he's still old school. He's still that doctor that will take a few moments before he comes in, because I can hear him outside the door. You, yeah. He'll take the chart, and I can hear him just standing there. Mm -hmm. You know, going through the file before he comes in. And when he comes in, it's evident that he has gone through it a minute. Right. But you have, you know, some of these younger doctors, like you said, that the whole, you know, quote unquote bedside manner is not there. Personality not is not there. Right. And it's almost scary because they're asking you questions mm -hmm. about your health and what's ailing you and what medications you've taken. And to me, some of that, they should at least look at the file. So they can see, so they can make, you know, yeah, so they can, calls. because yeah. sometimes you wonder, you know, is their diagnosis the best for you based on mm -hmm. the limited information that, you know, that they have. Plus, they got to remember, too, doctors are challenged now with Internet diagnosis. You know, people are diagnosing themselves yeah. from the Internet. So when the doctor gets to them, mm -hmm. they just going to let you just go ahead and run off. Everything you got going on, you think, and then basically they, they got a mm -hmm. few magic questions, a few magic touches they do to determine where you are. But a lot of times now, insurance companies don't really want to pay the doctor's fees. So now you're seeing nurse petitioners and they just guessing. So it's like, yeah, wow. You know, so that's why you are at a point now right. where you want to keep your, it's just like your car. You know, it's going to cost you some money if you let your car break down. But if you maintain your car, it's going to be less expensive for you to have to, you know, for your breakdowns. Because you're bringing it in, mm -hmm. you know what what needs to be done instead of waiting for that one breakdown. So uh, we got to treat ourselves exactly. right. Proper amount of exercise, not a lot of stress on the body. Mm -hmm. That was one of the things I learned, too, um, with being in the groups. Um, it was a guy came in and said that you really got to be careful with like how much weights and stress you put on the body because that can cause yeah. the body to think that it's being attacked. You know, mm -hmm. when you're thinking about being attacked, think about a you, you know a mountain lion is chasing you and like okay you can handle his distress from him for maybe five minutes, but if he's chasing you mm -hmm. for an hour, which is typically a lot of our workout times, that's too much. Every mm -hmm. day, that's why it says good to take off a day. Then the next day, you right. will do something different. Now, I heard a guy mm -hmm. said that when you are a certain age, cardio really cardio exercise really don't help men at a certain age. He said because it is reducing your testosterone. But he could have been saying it because he's trying to sell some stuff. <laughs> so who knows? So you really don't know who to believe. <laughs> he never does. Yeah, I told my doctor that he going to laugh. He's going to be cracking know, up. Yeah, it depends. On, I think it depends on what you're used to, you know, you know, I've been, fitness has been part of my life for as long as I can remember, you know, and, and I tell people all the time, you know, you don't, because people will maybe watch the um, Facebook live videos that I, cause I did one today with my trainer and mm -hmm. it's, it's on my page on uh, Paul G voice. Yeah, it's on my page. And you know, the people say, Oh, well, I can't work out like that. I can't work out that hard. You don't have to. It's just, I've been doing it all my life. So that's mm -hmm. why I, you know, work out, at the level that I work out at and that intensity, but doing what's comfortable. If it's just walking, you know, some of us have these homes that, you know, we have these, I call them stairway to heaven. Mm -hmm. You got these stairs, you know, walking up yeah. and down these stairs, walking around your neighborhood, or if you'd like to swim or just what, what works for you at, at, at your level mm -hmm. is, is beneficial. You know, whatever, what whatever level that is. So I think, I think sometimes a lot of people yeah. overdo it. You'd be surprised too. My you know, provider, too much. he brought up something like that today. He said, you know, you'd be surprised how simple an exercise can be. He said, say you're taking, he said, a lot of us go grocery shopping every week. Say when you take your car, mm -hmm. your, your groceries from your car, when you get inside, before you put them down, do like three arm curls on each arm, put it down, then go get the next oh, grocery. Yeah. He said that something Absolutely. like that can help keep you toned mm -hmm. over a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, yeah. you know, so you gotta take and even I, take yeah, take that because like even like like for example, it, it, you know, if you, it, you know, I'm in a home where I've got to go up a, a flight of steps mm -hmm. to 
get into the kitchen. Even that, as you're walking up that flight of steps, you know, you're working your your hamstrings and your quads and your glutes and all that. But even as you're walking up those steps with those chops, with those grocery bags, you know, doing a doing a couple of, oh, okay. of bicep curls. That's right. Curl and that, that trip up. up the step, those twelve steps up, mm-hmm. you're working your quads, you're working your hamstrings, your That's your right. inner thigh, your out of thigh, your, your glutes, you're working your uh, shoulders, you're working your biceps, yeah. all in those flights up and down the steps, taking groceries up that's and right. down. Resi- Boom, resistant that's training, workout. they call it. You, you done did it. And that's one of the, <laughs> and that was one of the things that I you know, I got really scared when I got sick. And I was really all mm-hmm. ears with my first doctor. But my first doctor, she ended up going back to Long Island. So she gave up her practice here. So then I was out. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a doctor for 30 days. I ran out of medication, but I was still working out and eating correctly. Gave up, you know, all mm-hmm. the, the white potatoes, the French fries, the bread, and all the stuff like that. So when I got my new doctor, right. she tested me. She said, you don't have diabetes. I was like, really? She said, yeah, you you know, your AC ones are normal because she did a complete blood workup and everything. So all I did, she said, just keep doing what you're doing. But at the time, you know, I was like a super duper happy camper at the time. You know, I was mm-hmm. I was loving what I was doing. So, you know, and, and, and the thing about it is what people don't realize, stress, and we said it earlier, can really take a toll on you. Unfortunately, I lost her cousin today that was very young. Oh, it turned out that she had a cardio arrest or something like that i mean we still waiting on mm-hmm. information but she was just in the hospital for that reason so um you know she was only 27 so you got to think about mm-hmm. you know you know what are you doing to your body you know you what are you putting in your body you know detox right. you know, we have a show where uh, michelle from serenity radio she talked a lot about pooping and detoxifying and toxifications and mm-hmm. the you know fiber high fiber diet and you know and, 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 and one of the things my mom found out is that everybody's body is made up different you gotta find out what type of body you have where some people are good with eating a heavy amounts of of of, of uh, animal tissue protein but then some of us do better when we do plant protein because I heard a guy said he right. didn't do well with plant protein. It was better. But then mm-hmm. you f- I found out that animal protein is really secondary protein. That's what I heard this doctor say on a, on a documentary. He said, did you know that animal mm-hmm. tissues is secondary protein? So the guy said, so what is, mm-hmm. so what is primary? He said, what are animals eating all day long? Wow. They're eating plants. Wow. Well, you know, there's there, there are a couple of books out there, and I'm not not endorsing it or not endorsing. I'm just mm-hmm. throwing the information out because some people really believe strongly in it, and some people think it's just a bunch of hogwash. But mm-hmm. there are a few books out that speak to eating right for your blood type, right. like certain blood mm-hmm. types, certain foods complement certain blood types and yeah, certain foods that. may not necessarily be mm-hmm. um, beneficial yeah. for certain blood types. There's got to be some truth to it, yeah. though. You know, I guess you can find out. I mean, like, some people don't do well eating um, breakfast, and that's because what is breakfast? <laughs> it's, yeah. hard, it's a high-carb diet. You know, it's a high-carb. It Michelle is. Michelle said, yeah. um, once you it eat is. a salad, she said, once you get... You know, get a get a white eggs or get an egg and make an omelet and put like spinach and tomatoes and a che- little bit of cheese in there. And you know, you're talking about wow, you're right. That's that's a pretty low carb diet. It's a higher protein diet, especially if you're using, uh, you know, broccoli and and like today, I had a really big lunch. So what I did was I mm-hmm. split it. So I ate half of it for my first break, which was mostly broccoli, tomatoes, and a little bit of chicken. I ate half the chicken. But then at lunchtime, right. I was still kind of full from that. So at lunchtime, I did the same thing. I ate the rest of it. I never, I couldn't even finish it today for some reason. I couldn't even finish it. Normally, I, I could take out that salad. Man, that salad was nothing. But I loaded mm-hmm. it with a lot of broccoli. And then I found out with, um, we was blessed in this neighborhood that they finally, they put in a Wegmans. And, you know, they're known for having a, a lot of mm-hmm. fresh vegetables, which some of your smaller mm-hmm. markets like most of your supermarkets, uh, yeah, too, you know, yeah, it's like not a great deal of choices. They have like a mm-hmm. huge, it's like humongous, the fresh produce section. Crazy. And you can even grow right. your own herbs. They got so much stuff. So when when I go, and my daughter's like really hyped about it because, you know, she's athletic and she run an indoor track. And so she mm-hmm. really care about 
taking a lot of plant-based stuff you know salad like we always go get like buy one get one free salad um i, I love soup right and wegmans is good for their soup um because they use organic chicken and a lot of fresh vegetables mm-hmm. in their soup. It's no, not high in sodium. And that's one of the things, too, that a lot of us as African Americans got to be aware of. Sodium is not mm-hmm. our good friend. <laughs> it's not at all. Mm-mm. Not Mm-mm. At all. And you know what I discovered? You know, one thing I, 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 I learned is you got to look at the labels. Uh, hear me. Mm-hmm. On bottled water, oh yeah, because bottled water. Somebody has has some soda. Because I was, you know, at one point I was drinking, you know, bottled. Well, I drink it like crazy anyway. I was drinking like crazy, and I'm like, why are my legs still swelling? Yeah. I'm not ingesting any salt, you know, salt. Wow. I remove salt, but my legs are swelling like I've got because you know, I've had blood pressure. My legs are swelling like as though I'm ingesting salt. Wow. And somebody said, start lo- looking at the labels on, mm-hmm. you know, the, on uh, a bottle of water. And sure enough, some of them do have sodium in them. Yeah, you know, no, some I of them see, do yeah. have sodium. But I, I, but I drink that. it from time to time, distilled water mm-hmm. that doesn't have sodium in it. And, and I can tell the difference. It's almost, it almost feels like a flush. Yeah, distilled mm-hmm. water doesn't have any minerals or anything in it either. It's like just drinking, like, <laughs> yep. nothing. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the other thing, too. Yeah, yeah. no nutrients. You know, so. Sometimes it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, it's good to wash your face with it, though. <laughs> you can wash up with it. <laughs> but I wouldn't yes. think it's going to give your body what it needs. But, you know, and, and that's one mm-hmm. of the things that I'm so happy about the projects that we have. Um, you know, like like I said, Dr. Chanel is really excited about what we're doing. Because it's going to, that movie, Living With Dirty Diana, is going to gonna be a health-conscious type movie. It's not going to, like, throw it in your face. But you're going to see, like, mm-hmm. you're going to hear and see the journey and and you're going to meet some, it's going to be widows in this movie too. You got two women. Mm. One was there Mm -hmm. all the way with her husband and he still, it wasn't enough support to keep him from eating to his death. And that's what happened. He ate to his death. Still would have been here today, yeah. only in his 60s, right. young, early 60s. I was just talking to his cousin. He was over here for New Year's Day. And then my other best friend, he his, his wife mm-hmm. went with him to the meetings and he she, he kept telling her, yeah, I got it, babe. I got it. And she believed him because he was always good about his word. You know, he took care of the family. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, that dude ended up, he couldn't even get out of his car because he was in a partial coma. Mm. You know, and mm-hmm. you know that's and that's the, and he was drinking. And that's another thing, the depression part of it, the hormone imbalance. Yeah. A lot of people understand about the makeup. Our body is so complicated. I don't even think they could put a price tag on it. Really, you know, they can't. Oh no, doctors are still they figuring can't. things out to this day, and they still haven't gotten a real clue why so many people got diabetes. The numbers are almost staggering. Like two, two out mm-hmm. of every ten people. It's like crazy. It's like 187 million people have it right now. And don't even know it. He said the numbers are like because you know there's, there's sugar, there's sugar and things that we don't even know sugar is in. But not that's, just the that's sugar, what it is. But the processed foods. See, the, the thing about it yeah. is the body. See, a lot of us have a genetic. It's like it's something about our major organs. It's like they mm-hmm. they can't handle so much of whatever we put in our body. But you know, when you think about back in the day when people used to call it sugar and you had everybody grandma had right. sugar, you know, and their grandfather. And what was the deal? We had mm-hmm. a lot of we had a lot of processed meat back then, a lot of hamburgers, a lot of sandwiches. Mm-hmm. I mean we had a lot of bologna I mean we had a lot of bologna hot dogs back then. A lot. Yeah. You know But then look at your but then look at your activity level. Yeah. You well, know we, what I'm yeah, saying? We played sports year round. Yeah. We were yeah, yeah. When we were eating all that stuff, and we were kids, what we were outside, yep. especially in the summer, when school was out. From the time the sun went up till the street lights came on, we were out in the street. Yeah, but no, I don't think the process. But I think too, the foods are processed a little differently now because the way the animals are taken care of. The animals are not taken care. of like they were back in our day. The animals yeah. are like, mm-hmm. you know, you, you go to them places, you're going to be disgusted where you see they, they got these cows and these little, they can't move around, mm. they're not grazing, they're not mm-hmm. they're eating grass, they're eating corn, which is like a diabetic, right. a diabetic cannot eat anything with corn. And so you eat meat, you're eating corn. Because <laughs> that's what you, mm. you eat, what you made of, right? That's what they say. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. It's, it's a lot. You got a point, you know, yeah. We're going to, we're going to, it's going to be a lot that's going to be in a film that's going to be real shocking to people. Yeah. Um, basically, just letting people know that it's just time. What phone did that? It's time for you to mm-hmm. take care of yourself and 
because you can be me. Yeah. You know, I didn't think I was going to ever be me before. Maybe like later on, because my grandmother lived, didn't get it till she was in her sixties, and she just passed uh-huh. just this past this last March of uh, twenty sixteen. Oh, wow. But she was like ninety seven or something like that, and, uh-huh. and and she actually passed from malnutrition because she had got to a point where oh. she couldn't remember whether she ate or not. Yeah. Eight or not? Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. we was trying to get her yeah, to move we gotta... here for the longest time, but she, her sister, just would not mm-hmm. let her leave. And was not, and they said it's against the law to to make elderly people move. I was like, what kind of law was that? It was for their help. What kind of law that? They can't make a decision for themselves. Somebody got to take control. Yeah, I'm not gonna move them. Yeah, right? They call that abuse. Right. They call that some kind of neglect. Mm-hmm. I said it should be neglect, not abuse. So I don't know. It's it's crazy. But look, Paula, look like we're yeah. running out of time. And man, it was, so, right. it was so good to have you on here. Well, yeah, I was sharing the platform, Survivor <laughs> Radio, Positive Power. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate everybody that's tuning in. I hope that uh, they got something from it. Of course, we didn't get a chance to tell everything we was doing. Can't, can't let mm-hmm. all the cats out the bay. But the main but thing okay. we, we want people well, to know. But is, you know what? But you know Mm-hmm. I think what I'll do, and I, w- I was mentioning this to you earlier. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I, w- I was mentioning it earlier is that, is that um, yeah, having you on the Paula G show more frequently this year. Yeah, because there's going to be a lot of stuff Come going on, on. especially uh, when the spring mm-hmm. comes. we got a lot of artists going to be coming. It'd be great to talk about some of them or what the experience right. they had. Just like recently we had Re, Serena Re Green was here. We had her, her backup mm-hmm. singers were here. And actually one of the guys released a Christmas album. We had a chance to have him on the show or Jamal Bivens. And, and then we had, uh, 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 Trent Gannison and Kent Osborne came here and actually the, yeah. uh, I host them and I took them out we had a great time men bonding and that kind of sparked me to have the idea to uh, start a podcast for men only I know you wanted to get to that and that was called Next Man Up oh gosh yes yeah. we didn't even talk about that oh my well, god that, a few this, minutes. This, a few Saturday minutes. morning y'all show. got to tune in yeah you got to tune in now, now we won't have a show this week uh, cause I got, we got, right. uh, we got a big birthday celebration for my sister-in-law and uh, the kids got to get their okay. haircuts and ladies got to get their hair done. But the main thing about that mm-hmm. is, um, God did put that on my heart. Us being media, we do have a, a responsibility to our community to build, to bring, we always yeah. talking about BT, you know, getting rid of all those great programs they had back in the nineties. And that we have, mm-hmm. yeah, we all own our own podcast, but yet, we rather come on here and be yakking about nothing and bringing people and selling mm-hmm. stuff all the time when it's time for us to start having um, shows that's... Sharing that information. Right. Yeah. Discerning information, telling what some of these guys are doing in their community so you can be part of that or you can contribute. If you can't contribute physically, maybe you can monetarily because a lot of these guys got great, great missions, ministries. Right, and we need, and then mm-hmm. maybe that can inspire people to get off the couch and do something in that community because that's the problem. We're not taking ownership of our communities right now. Mm-hmm. And maybe this can inspire and our communities are being regentrified, right. left and right. That's right. So we got uh, Dr. Paul Kelly that's- moderating, and each week I have um, a Christian rapper. A lot of these Christian rappers have some real life gang experience. A lot of them. They've been, a lot of these guys mm-hmm. been incarcerated mm-hmm. for many, many, many years, so they have a lot to share. You know, and this could be in the topic mm-hmm. late for the last two weeks has been um, basically is about our children, how to to make sure your teens is not following the wrong crowd. And, and Dr. Paul Kelly has mm-hmm. been very clever on how he mixes the, the, the questions up in that topic. That's, you know, the sub mm-hmm. the subtopics, which is awesome. So episode yeah. one and episode two is out on Spreaker Radio. All you got to do is search for Jerry West Live on Spreaker Radio. Uh, that's our international mm-hmm. podcast. And I think you would love this show. You guys would love it. Right. Women, listen to it. Because, and then, and then also, you know, also, if I could share, for, for those who may have missed part of the uh, show this evening, with you as my guest, they can go to www.thepologyshow.com and they can scroll to the episode. It will also be posted on my group page, The Paula G Show, as well as my personal page, Paula G. Voice. You can also go to my website, www.paulagvoice.com, to listen to tonight's episodes, Breaker Radio, Stitcher Radio, Tune In Radio, The Paula G. Show. And I just thank Amen. you so very much for 
coming on and helping me celebrate my second year. Yeah, you know, a lot years. of times, you know, and I know we got to go, a lot of times we celebrate, you, you know, our, our years on, on air. And, you know, for me, a lot of times I, I forget because I just keep grinding. I keep grinding because I well, love radio. Well, and I thank you, my brother. Well, let's get some shout outs to people who help celebrate your two years and help celebrate our uh, four years. We have Eric Drake is out there. We got Prophet Mike out there. Christina yeah. Lockett is out there. And, um, of course, we got a shout out to Patrice Jackson. That's my co-host on uh, uh, Wednesday nights and we go, we missed her having her on the show because you and I had already agreed that it was going to be a collaborator I forgot to tell Patrice that too I was like oh my god I forgot to tell Patrice <laughs> yeah but she was good oh my goodness good. Patrice <laughs> I'm sorry Patrice forgive but I had to tell her yeah she know how I am forgive him Patrice yeah, she, she <laughs> we know how he stuff. is. Patrice. Yeah, but she's working <laughs> on some big stuff too, which we're um, released on the yeah. show. And she's ready. So, uh, with all that said, um, like you said, you know, you can guys can also catch Paula G and I on Friday nights on the Quad Storm at eleven thirty. We also we have fantastic guests opening up the show. We got sometimes we got Shea mm-hmm. Samuels here. We got Dana Watson from Total Life Changes. So come on out and hang out with us and find out about what's going on around your town and how you can support these these artists and, and, and these these business people and the media, especially the media. And one of the things mm-hmm. that um that we seeing a lot of, and I'm not sure if you've been seeing a lot of apology. There's a lot of uh, Christian television networks starting to pop up now, so a lot of these guys are looking for content. So if you if you're you know you're yeah. a playwright and you're looking for production companies yeah, look, make sure say, you make mm-hmm. sure you get a good production company and some real actors a lot of actors are willing to do things for for no money because because of the the, the growing trend of the, the internet yeah be careful because i've been looking at some some shows it's like oh man that's bad so you know i ain't mean no harm but i'm just saying you know i think this is an opportunity for people who have real good skill sets that can write this audition, take mm-hmm. your time. Audition for some good actors. Just, just don't let Cousin Killer be in there because that's your cousin. He said he can act a little bit. He little gangster. You know, take your time. Mm-hmm. Put out a really good product. You know, that's what God wants. You know, we're representing the kingdom, right? So it's exactly. A, it's a lot of these networks popping up right now because I just saw an announcement of, uh, I think, Jay Nicole and Howard Sapp got a new a uh, television show that's going to be running on a network called, I think it's called Christian Vision Entertainment Television. And they, I think they out of New Jersey. And I remember she had went to an event um, back in, I think, October, November. I was supposed to have been there, but um, we had deaf in the family. But uh, a lot mm-hmm. of a lot of networks was there shopping their ideas and content to each other. So uh, you're going to see a lot of that, people. So a lot of you are very talented out there, especially, you know, Christina Lockett, Big Winner, Tina, Superwoman. A lot of you guys are in front of Facebook. Um, and you got Sister Regina. She's very intelligent, very savvy on the Internet. Look at mm-hmm. these companies real closely. And like I said, if you're looking for a good production company, you come to Baltimore, you know, I shoot you. Come to Charm City. I can shoot you right here in my studio. Or we can rent out a spot. All right. We got great we got great equipment. And I know other production companies, too, that can help out for bigger productions. Uh, I got a guy that I network right. with in um, Salisbury under um, Vision Works. Uh, Vision Urban Urban Vision Works. And they, they actually do move motion pictures and stuff like that. Stage plays. You know, mm-hmm. you name it. All right. So let's just do it right, y'all. Every Drake and, and, and Dr. Mm-hmm. Bobby Jones, they set the stage. They showing us how to do it yeah. right for television. Let's, let's, let's follow their lead. And I got to say this too, Paul, before you go. Uh, I told you before that uh, Clark Garrison, and I didn't get a chance to talk to him, ever talk to him before personally or even on the air. But mm-hmm. his, his radio oh, we'll station. Oh, we'll let that happen. Yeah, got to let that happen. His radio station has definitely been a template for me, you know, uh, trying mm-hmm. to understand how to get it right. Because like he said, it wasn't nobody really out there for him to follow. Uh, it was a couple of white right. networks like Stitcher and NPR and all of them, but they was like a different type of an mm-hmm. animal. So I was glad to see that, that what he has is, has been so successful and Positive Power definitely was was using that as a mirror, you know, with integrating television and film with radio. Right. We do red carpet. You know, like I said, we're working on motion mm-hmm. pictures. We got uh, three television shows we're about to produce. We got Beyond the Beat. Black Black Live right. Black Live Man <laughs> Blackout Live concert <laughs> series. 
Yeah. His show is coming here. Kimmy Kim's yeah. show is coming here. Uh, and then we got a lot of, um, CEOs here. We got CEO, uh, Fred Newsom has a record label here. So we got plenty of artists for you guys to interview. So, uh, you know, it's time mm-hmm. to put Charm City on the map. You guys want to come to Charm City? Be entertained by me. Come on through Charm City. 1600 restaurants downtown, east and west harbor. Looking good. Four or five brand new re- hotels been built. We can have, we got three mm-hmm. casinos. Come on to town, y'all. Chum City, baby. The wire is over. I think they tore the area up to where the eye, the wire was shot at. I don't think it's no. I don't think it exists anymore. Oh, really? It's not there. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of wow. the hood. A lot of the hood has been bought up by Johns Hopkins in, in Maryland, in University of Maryland. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so the projects have been been and that's happened. Bombed. Yeah, they destroyed a lot of those projects. Wow. A lot of the people that, in the that, you, you know, you know, it was it was, it, it was interesting. If I can say this real quick, I know we 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 gotta go. But for my daughter's, my younger daughter's birthday in November, I gave her a Broadway birthday weekend because she loves plays. She's in the theater business and she loves plays. I gave her a Broadway birthday weekend and we spent the weekend, uh, had got a hotel down there on Times Square and spent the weekend at Times Square. And we went over to Harlem to Sylvia's restaurant. Hold on for Harlem a minute, Paula. Ever... Hold on for a second. Um, uh-huh. Christina just reported that Clark was in a car accident. Is that Did that just happen? She said 12 he, car pilot. He, he was in, you know, I found out earlier today, he's fine and his family oh. is fine. Oh, okay. That they happened were in an accident. She was, yes, yeah, she was taking her, he was taking his daughter back home. Oh. And he was coming back, and I think it was earlier in the week or last week, oh, okay. and one car hit an ice patch, and they, there was a 13-car pileup. I know the car was jacked up a little bit. Oh, okay. um, they're okay. You know, some bumps and bruises. And oh, okay. I should have mentioned that, was, that earlier. That was, so thank you, yeah. Christian. I yeah, yeah I was about to say, because you know, mentioned that earlier. That. All right. Thank God. <laughs> Yeah. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was yeah. breaking No, that's news. okay. Yeah, that's that okay. News that's something. okay. Um, but to 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 your point, what I would like to do is later in the year, and we'll talk and we'll schedule it, I would really like to have both of you back on, you and Clark, yeah, and have awesome. a dialogue about internet radio and radio, because both of you have, have such passion, and both of you, your journeys are similar in that, the yes. challenges that you faced mm-hmm. and how both of you really were trailblazers mm-hmm. doing things in, in internet and radio before everybody else was doing them. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll have that conversation. But, but what I was saying about uh, Harlem, we went over to Harlem to Sylvia's restaurant. And as we were walking around Harlem, just noticing the change. There's a Whole Foods in Harlem, y'all. <laughs> Just noticing the changes mm-hmm. in Harlem, how very real and tangible regentrification is coming. And I saw this documentary on how some of the people, of course, have been moved out because your yeah. property value has gone up and, you know, mm-hmm. they've taken over a lot of those old uh, brownstones that have deteriorated and they're renovating them and now they're selling them for 10 times, you know, what they were selling them for before. But then you have, you know, some, some hardcore Harlem people that are like, I'm not going anywhere. I've been here 67 yeah, years, right. That's my aunt. you know, That's and I'm not aunt. going anywhere. So neighborhoods are really, really changing. Yeah, it is. It is. And I mean, and Charm yeah. City has changed so much. I mean, just in this area alone, I took the guys out and I only had to drive like five minutes when we was in this area. It was like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. It was like we can walk and mm-hmm. cobblestone bricks. You had a little sports bar where we just walked right in there. They actually had an outdoor patio where the fire was burning. Mm-hmm. Beautiful Christmas tree was up. We sat there and, uh, you know, drank club soda and ordered food. And I had like anything mm-hmm. you can name was right there. And then they about to build a mega mall, which is going to be outdoor, which is going to have your, you know, your box stores like Costco's and Lowe's and all of them. It's going to be huge. It's going to bring a tons of jobs right. for your, for our younger people, you know. So, mm-hmm. and, they, and they did put up another mall too, which is, is, is connected to our, uh, college, a community college, and they have like a super duper, uh, multi million dollar, um, like media rooms where you can rent out and you know do lectures and stuff and run your business stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's connected to condominiums where a lot of the athletes are living at, and they also give like um, courtyard 
uh, parties with the food trucks and have live bands and everything. Yeah. And it's all connected with the train. So when you get on that train, that train takes you downtown where you got 1,600 restaurants waiting for you at the waterfront, East and West Harbor. Right. And I'm going to mm -hmm. give you guys gonna get a chance to see it because um, one of the things that's going to be so spectacular about the opening of the movie, which is probably better than a movie, is um, it's the, it's, the, it's an arrow drone shot of the harbor. And it's playing over a track. Mm. The track is playing over, it. and of course, this is going to be going to be opening all my series for who I am. And this, and remember, mm -hmm. who I am is going to be a series on black men. And these guys are going to be from China. I actually have footage of some other guys, but I think I'm going to stick with um, mm -hmm. uh, guys from Baltimore since you know we was affected by that Freddie Gray, and that's basically what uh, you know impacted me to want to do this movie was the Freddie Gray riots that went on in Baltimore. So. Uh, all right. Just to show everybody that right. there's some guys doing their thing here, ladies. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to go white, mm -hmm. you know, Asian, whatever. <laughs> to you. Brothers got it going on. You just got to have a the Brothers got it going on. Right. I, I, I give hats, hats off to my brothers and encouragement mm -hmm. to my brothers. And I know that the, the, one, the, the brothers that are doing the right thing do not get enough. Praise, do not get enough recognition, do not get enough exposure because they're overshadowed by the ones that are not doing the right, right. thing. Right. But please know, believe, and understand that what you do is noticed. That's right. All of you out there that are men that are listening, that are doing the right thing, please understand and know that it is noticed. Somebody sees it. It is noticed. Be encouraged. Don't waver from it just because the you know the ones that are not doing the right thing are getting you know more of your attention and therefore uh, you know it, you know what they say one bad apple. Mm -hmm. Be well, you know, too, Paula, that's, that's, do what it is that you're doing. That's why it's going to be mm -hmm. so important for, for media, like, you know, companies like Clark and, 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 and you know, Christina Lockett's and us. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. we have to find these young men and invite them on your show. You got some guys doing some positive things. Invite them on your show and give them a oh, chance yeah. to express their, you know, their intelligence to everybody and let people know what are they doing for this world. And that's why mm -hmm. I said next man up. It's a lot of next men up. So check us out, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, our weekly men's summit. It's a live podcast. Um, I'm, I'm going to be putting out flyers, let you guys know when you can invite, you know, men that you know to be part of this. Mm -hmm. Have any guys you think would be an excellent guest, um, especially, you know, you talk yeah. about guys who have spent some time incarcerated, but they doing that thing right now. They went up against all odds. Mm -hmm. Just like my man, Ken Osborne, dude owns his own trucking company. He has his own ministry. He has a book mm -hmm. coming out, your album coming out. You know, that's, you know, he's working it. He's doing his thing. So he's going to be right. uh, appearing right. live on at one of the events that we've been promoting on January 20th. If you want to come out and meet him, come on out. He's part of Blackout mm -hmm. Live. That's going to be released this spring. So it's a lot of stuff going on, y'all. So we just, we need live help. On 2018. You know, support your black media, y'all. Don't, you know, just don't look at us and say, hey, I ain't going to share that. You know, he looked like he's going to be a millionaire. Don't even worry about the money part of it, y'all. God got us. Mm -hmm. this, it's about the mm -hmm. people. We mm -hmm. gotta, we gotta get away it's from that, right. escape from that crab mentality. That's why we haven't gotten anywhere. Of course, some of us right. have gotten somewhere, but it, it's been that way for hundreds of years that there's been black people that have money. <laughs> you know, that's right. nothing new. Right. You know, we have always had yeah. doctors and lawyers yep. that that done have lived well. It's the, it's the, it's the rest of us that wasn't mm -hmm. doing anything. So uh, support each other, y'all. Yeah. And I know my sister Regina. Support each other. She reached out today and she said she want to start carrying our podcast on her group. Uh, of course, there's some protocols mm. we have to follow, but I'm willing to do all of that. Mm -hmm. So let's do our thing, y'all. Let's help each other out, support our black media so we be able to have a voice in our community so we can start rebuilding. Everybody keeps saying, oh, that's cliche. No, it, this Internet stuff that we're doing with this radio, and, and Christina mm -hmm. just said it, mm -hmm. we, can, we, can, we can rebuild. I'm actually looking at starting an internship with a young kid. You know, we can start reaching them, letting they start reaching each other. So we start teaching one, yeah. let him start teaching his people. And that's one of my practice since school has gone back. I'm going to be reaching into my local school and, and with the media teacher and find out, does she have a young person who's interested in radio? And I'm going to give them their own program. So that's some of the stuff that we're going to be doing because they need to be developed yeah. and trained right now. Don't wait till they get to college. Let's do it right now while they're in high school. So mm -hmm. now they got a, a vision. And now they know when they get to college what they mm -hmm. want to be. You know, you want them to find. So they out have motivation. Now. That's right. 
They want to find that motivation. Out Amen. So that's what we're going to be doing, y'all. So I, I, I encourage everybody out there that's doing radio, find go to your local school and find out if there's a teacher or instructor or principal willing to uh, allow you to start an internship in, in media. Mm-hmm. You know, get get them interested right now because this thing is not going away. This is some real. This right. radio, this internet radio is real, like Christina said. This is real, y'all. This ain't no joke. So we got to support mm-hmm. with all these groups. It's got thousands of members, and I mean, I'm in support groups that got sixty five thousand members, eighty. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Number. So I should mm-hmm. have no problem selling my film. I don't have to put in the theater, but we may put in the theater just so we can invite. The haters. I'm sorry, y'all. Let me just invite some friends and family. <laughs> okay, now you get you get sidetracked. You get sidetracked. Yeah, side they both. <laughs> Who knows? But 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 you, but uh, my other movie, Who I Am, is going to be available on YouTube live. So we'll let you guys announce when that's going to be live. And that's where I'm going to need your support. You know, telling everybody to, so we can support these young men, what they're doing, listening to their mm-hmm. story, so we can inspire other young men. That's the point. This is to inspire, encourage, and empower other young men. To do it, they start seeing yeah. guys look like them doing these things. They gonna want to do that. Yeah. They want to do it. They mm-hmm. gonna be inspired. Right mm-hmm. now, guys are destructive. I was listening to Kent and those guys the other other day. Uh, Stephen Marshall and all of them. They said they they did what they saw. Scarface was the man back in the eighties and nineties because oh yeah, so that's what they was used to. They you know, drugs. Yeah. yeah, you walk out the street, you see the dude you know, with the big rims. You want that? You want the big yeah, rims? You want that? And, you know, I've known that, you know, because, you know, I, I work, and Clark was teasing me earlier about, you know, he, I love the babies that I do because, you know, I'm an educator by trade. I'm, I'm a certified professional school counselor, uh, K-12, through and I've learned over the years of working with young people, when you raise the bar, when you raise the bar of expectation, they will rise to the challenge. That's right. You know, I've, I've worked with at-risk students now, and we work towards assisting them in getting their GED and life beyond the GED, whether it's a two-year college, four-year college, trade, military, whatever it is. And I always tell my students the first day of class, I say to them, congratulations in advance on obtaining your GED, because as long as you show up, as long as you show up, we will give you what it is that you need to be successful, but you have to show up and you do the work. And I expect you at the end of this program to have your GED and to be ready to step right. into that two-year college, four-year college, right. military. And you, when, when, when we're talking, I don't, we don't waver. I don't waver from that statement. They come, oh, it's too hard, it's too this, it's too that. I expect you to overcome that. Mm-hmm. I expect you to study whatever it is that you, if it's English, math, science, social stuff, to study it. I expect you to come into tutoring. I expect you to sit here and work on this so you, until you overcome it and so that you can get your GED and mm-hmm. then move on to two-year college and four. And when you, when you leave that in the atmosphere with them, they will rise to that challenge. They will. They will. You know, they, they, yeah, they will rise to that challenge. Amen. You know, right. the pants and the hat, you know, I, I tell you, the young men, you know, they, they think they're going to come in class with their pants sagging. And, and, you know, I stop them at the door. I'm like, you got to get your life together before yeah, you come that's to what's my so, class. And that's what's so important about this men's summit thing. We're going to be talking a lot about that kind of yeah. stuff. About guys showing more respect, being a little more clean cut now. You know, it's hard for the women to tell the thugs from the good guys. You know, it's like, who the good right. guys? Can't tell the difference. So we don't know. We taking my son get his exactly. haircut this week because we want him to look decent mm-hmm. at my sister in law's 60th birthday party. So uh, you know. Mm-hmm. But you know, up. even the ladies, I say to the lady, the the young ladies that are listening, again, the expectation, the men will rise to the to to, to that challenge. So if we're accepting baggy pants and we act like baggy pants mm-hmm. at school, then we're gonna see baggy yep. pants. Yep. But if we start not accepting that and that's not cool and, you know, a mm-hmm. uh, young man might be interested in a young lady and, you know, his t- pants are sagging, but she won't give him the time of day because his pants are sagging, I bet you those pants will come up. That's right, because we do I'm anything for the women. That's right. We do anything for the girls. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yep. Yes. So, ladies, we, you know, we've got, we've got to... Um, you know, we, we, we complain about it, but we've got to Everybody raise that bar of expectation right. as well. Everybody got to step it you up. know, and a man, a man will up. rise to the challenge if Woman you, if you, if you, you know, yeah. put it out there. Yes. All right. So I, yeah. I challenge anybody out there in radio to um, reach back and mm-hmm. teach somebody, you know, you don't have to necessarily, you know, 
you know, because we got people interested in coming onto your podcast and they want to pay money to get airtime. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about teaching some young people your craft, letting them see what you do, you know, going out to career mm-hmm. days, you know, contact the schools. Career day is going to be coming up for a lot of the seniors real soon. So, uh, you know, be part of that, you know, bring, you know, bring your equipment right. out, some cars, let them check you out. You know, you'd be surprised. One kid, it could be one kid. All it takes. One, yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. All right, Paula G, right. You, you ready to get out of here? Call it a night. I am. All right. Again, I appreciate it. I am. had a wonderful in. time. And thank you so much for um, being part of this talk. You know, well, be, let me be part of Survivor Radio and, and, um, Give me a chance to talk about some of the things we're doing here, Positive Power, Double XI, and so much stuff. You know, like, you know, you being yeah. from scratch in the service. The main thing I did want to let everybody mm-hmm. know we got the new film coming out. We got two new films coming out. Mm-hmm. We're going to be still shooting uh, Who I Am. Uh, a next series going to be I'm working on because this is my actually my first film. So there, there's going to be some problems with it, but you got, I got to release it. The, my podcast community said, you got to release it, release it. So, right. uh, so mm-hmm. I'm gonna release it. And of course I learned from that film. Of course, you know, I'm working on other stuff too. We do concerts and everything, but the main thing is, you know, you guys see what its purpose is. And also not only that, yeah. we also got done with debt is coming back with Sophia Jacobs. She's going to be teaching you guys oh, how yeah. to use her debt, her debt, um, uh, um, principles and, and, and little ways of, of saving money and putting money away and paying debt off. So mm-hmm. that show is coming back real soon in a couple of weeks. And also again, look for Kimmy Kim and Paula G in the spring and beyond the beat. Yeah. Dr. Chanel. Stewart. Absolutely. All right, y'all, we got exciting things happening Absolutely. here. So uh, we appreciate you guys and uh, we love y'all and happy new year again. We love y'all. All right. Thank you. Happy new year. Happy new year. All right, y'all tell them robot. What's up? You are listening to Jerry Royce Live <laughs> Worldwide Podcast. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Double XI. Positive Power 21. Dot org. Internet Radio. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live. Worldwide Podcast. Hi, I'm Larry W. Robinson, host of Gospel Updates, your gospel entertainment news report. And you're listening to Positive Power 21 Christian Radio with Jerry Weiss, live worldwide. All right, don't forget, y'all, to tune in tomorrow night. We got Curry Hines from New York, Brooklyn, New York, from the Hair Radio Show. The, hair, the morning Hair Radio Show. He'll be here with his cast, his, uh, his co host couple of them i think it's three of them total but we're gonna have a good time talking about what he's doing up there and and uh, why he's been away for so long all right so let's have some fun y'all and give praise to our god our lord and savior jesus christ and spread the good news that's right the good news that the lord is coming soon don't worry about anything instead pray about everything tell him good news y'all Hey, what's up? This is your boy, Joshua Rogers, and I want to take this moment to say happy anniversary to Jerry Royce and the Jerry Royce Live Radio Show. Listen, thank you guys so much. You've been such a great friend to me. You've been so supportive, and I want you to know that I really, really, really appreciate it. So happy anniversary, and I wish you many, many more years to come. Love you, fam. Hi, this is Michelle Brooks Thompson, and I just want to say congratulations for four years of radio to Positive Power 21 Christian Media and Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Ministries. Hi, this is Carrie Gordon, and I wanted to say congratulations for four years of radio to Positive Power 21 Christian Media and Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Ministries. God bless. Hi, this is recording artist Reggie Campbell saying congratulations to four years of radio to Positive Power 21 Christian Media with Jerry Ross Live Worldwide Ministry. This is Earl Bynum, and on behalf of me, Earl Bynum Ministries, El Ray Entertainment, on stage with Earl Bynum Radio, as well as Musical Soul Food Family, we want to say happy anniversary to Jerry Ross Live Radio Show. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live 
Worldwide Podcast. There's so much going on in the world today. But we don't have to worry. God's got it all in control. So just trust and know God cares. And He cares for you. In a mansion. Made of stone In a shanty All alone God cares He cares God cares for you The black or white all are precious in his sight God cares are poor hmm. to the one in need to the beggar man Yeah.